My guests need very little introduction, but we'll run through. It's the A-listers from the RTE A-team. Mr. Bernard Flynn, All-Ireland winner with Meath. Also our, our very own pantomime villain here in Mayo earlier on in the summer. We'll get to that later. John Casey, Charlestown legend and former Mayo footballer. And of course, the one and only Desi Dolan from Westmeath, all-star Leinster Championship winner and a man who's making a big name for himself with RTE all summer long. Before we get into the, to the All-Ireland final, lads, of course, I have to ask the question, the burning question. When I mentioned I was coming to Charlestown during the week, everyone I met said, you've got to ask the question. You know, we know he's going to be there. The whole county's been talking about it all summer. The whole country's been talking about it all summer. So I thought, we'll get it out of the way good and early, and we'll, we'll put it to bed. So what I want to ask you, Desi, yeah. is what's the story with the utility room? Um, Dermot, I said Dermot won't be too happy with his couch now, for example. <laughs> the Feng Shui is all over the place. Feng Shui is all over the place. Uh, look at happy wife, happy life. I left her there, she's ironing away, happy house, trying to <laughs> You do know this has been streamed on Facebook now. <laughs> she better not be watching. Uh, no, great experience. Uh, Dermot Bannon, um, look, it was good fun, I have to say. Um, it turned out well, the house. Lots of windows. Everyone's, everyone has their own taste, but it turned out good, and we had a good experience. And It's done now. A, a, a house building. And at house. least nobody talks about it anymore. No, in fairness, more people talk about the utility room than football, so it's grand. It gets me away with a couple of things. Who paid for it? Eamon <laughs> O'Hara have been a manners, will you? Was that O'Hara? It's early yet. He, he hasn't aged well. That question was actually from Mickey Conroy because he's building himself at the moment, I think. Right. Has he news? Is there, is, there, is there an announcement coming, do you think? Sure, he's up in part two. We'll ask him himself. I hope so. He's at more gigs now than... Uh, he's, <laughs> there's, the, there's the opening of a bag of crisps, I think, at 12 o'clock in the square, and Mickey is going to it. Yeah. John, as, as the hometown favourite here, well, you used to, let's be honest about it, you used to be the hometown favourite, oh, yeah, okay. Tom Parsons came Tom out. Tom Parsons country now, yeah, it's great. Look, at we played a good few All-Irelands, Mike, uh, down the years without uh, a player from our club involved. And you don't get as involved, and I think Tom Parsons was badly missed out of a couple of them All-Irelands. Left off a panel when he shouldn't have been, probably went off, it's been well documented this week. Tom's story, went off to Cardiff, worked hard, worked his ass off on his own. And for our sake and for Tom Parsons' sake, because he's a fine, fine footballer, we're delighted as a club that he's back and a mainstay on this Mayo team. Here, here. Tell me, John, you obviously, you, you were that soldier in 96 and 97, and now you can see it from the other perspective. What does it mean to the town and to the area and to the club to have one of your own, not alone representing Mayo, but playing in an All-Ireland final for Mayo? It must mean that everybody's walking around here 10 feet tall? Absolutely, it's huge. We, we don't get, you don't get involved as much, as much as you might think you do. But I remember those question marks over myself making the team in, in, uh, in 1997. I'd been left off for the semi-final that year. And uh, I remember when I got the phone call from, from John Mohan to say, tell me I was going to be starting the 97 All-Ireland and word got out and it hit the press. People around the town started putting up flags. And I remember, I'll never forget Mohan saying, you're a fierce feckin' clannish bunch there. He said, you won't support us unless you've won your own. That's what it means. And I went up mad for Mayo to win All-Ireland when Mickey C was playing, Aidan was playing in them. But, uh, but when you don't have somebody your own, we got big time into it when Aidan was playing, but when you don't have somebody, and then the two years that they had that Tom was basically left in limbo, your just heart isn't in it because you just want, and it should be a lesson for any young fella, I suppose, growing up, get on your county team because your club gets right behind you for it and we're delighted. Look at Tom, he's been fantastic, but he's one of the, the main midfielders in the country right now. And am I right in thinking there's a, a Parsons delegation in KD's tonight? There could be now, yeah, by, by all accounts, like it, 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 it's been kept secret that they're here, so don't tell anybody, but I think Tom... So don't mention that Tom and Carmel are here, is it? Yeah, that light has blinded me, yeah, don't, don't tell anybody Tom and Carmel are here, but they had to get special permission to be here, but it's great, look, it's great for them. As a player, Mike... And all the boys will testify. You, you tend to be out of the bubble. You, you don't know what's happening. You know, I'm sure Tom and Carmel have been absolutely inundated with phone calls, good look messages, walking down the street, getting pulled. Have you any tickets? By the way, have you any tickets? No. No, okay. Short question. But yeah, and look at it. It's great for them. But look at they're, they're going to know all about what it's. I mean, but they're used to it now. 
you've got two teams. This is the great thing about this final. It's not novel. Both teams, it's not novel for any of them going into it. They've both experienced uh, it before. They all know what it's all about. They get the rigmarole, the press of, uh, night out of the way, and it's all about concentrating on football. But it's great that we've got a midfielder playing for me on Sunday week. Bernard, as I mentioned, with RTE and, and with RTE Radio in particular, you've had a front row seat for Mayo's journey through the championship, but you got, you got catapulted into the spotlight pretty spectacularly there er, earlier on in the summer. I mean, when you, when you reflect back on, on your Aidan O'Shea comments and oh, what you said, yeah, John wants, to, John wants a selfie with you before you go home. We'll have to get home. Oh, first of all, I was in his house beforehand. <laughs> Let me tell you, it'd give Desi a run. I'd run any time <laughs> your house. I mean, I was in Yeah, it's before. a serious gap. Yeah, I've never seen a house with so many fucking quirky corners and angles. <laughs> he loves angles and shapes. Jeremy and Bannon would have a field day. But when so, you reflect back yeah. now and you look back, do, do you regret what you said? Do you no. regret how you said it? You know, would you have done things differently? No, I, I was speaking to a couple of lads up there. And I know this isn't going to be easy yet when I'm in Mayo, but I'm going, I, I 100% back, back up the message and the point I made. It was misinterpreted slightly. Um, I organised the challenge match myself with Jerry McEntee in our club. There's about 40, 50 people out of Saturday and even at the match. The only point I made, and it's probably not the week to actually say it, but if, if you want to be honest, and there's no point in telling the truth, and sometimes the truth hurts. And what I seen and what I, right in front of my eyes that night, 100% didn't sit well, and it was, something wasn't right. And I said it, but I never said I gave out about selfies at all. I said I gave out about a guy taking selfies when he should have been doing something at that moment with his teammates. That's the only thing I said. And I stand over that 100% and I can go through the instant with anybody because I was there, one of the few guys organizing all that. And you know what? Sometimes somebody, and a point comes in somebody's life, it happened to me when I was very, very young. And somebody, I didn't like something was said and I wasn't doing something right. And it changed my life in football. And I know the point I made was 100% correct. Would I change that in different? Um, probably wouldn't say it about a Mayo player. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that he has bigger fan club here because I got fucking slaughtered. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I'm not on Facebook. I got destroyed. <laughs> No, I, no, but I, do you know the best? I'm on Twitter because I write for the mirror. They asked me to go on Twitter this year around April and May. I don't do as an Instagram or Facebook. Never been on them. Well, last Sunday morning, with a gang from Mayo was on it, all right. But um, my kids came home and they said, "Holy jeez!" I was laughing. The I was stuff on the that was said. Nobody even remembered I was on it at all. Quite funny. No, but just to go back, and I'm yeah. not. It's not it's, often you're upstairs no, now, Jason. Tell you what, can I, I honestly just I finish on the point? And there's more important points than that, but. The point I made, at the time I made it, about somebody that should have been doing something else if he was a team player, genuine at that time, I stand over that 100%. And a few people around me couldn't believe it. Because uh, I, I grew up in a squad and with a manager that would not entertain what took place for that couple of minutes. But it, I said it. Um, would I do it again? I would do it again. Was it me, young fellas, looking for the picture? No, it wasn't. Oh, there was no medium for us there at all. Because <laughs> there was hardly any of the game. And do you know what? I actually think sometimes it might hit a chord. And I think it has made a bit of a difference. I genuinely do. And maybe that was a message that maybe at the time the management weren't strong enough to give themselves. I don't know. I'm only surmising. And uh, I can honestly say I'm supporting Aidan O'Shea on Sunday <laughs> and Mayo. Like I was last year, I tipped them working on the match last year. I tipped them the last day against Kerry. And sometimes... <clears throat> when they haven't got over the line, there's some little reasons why. And there's some little things missing. Maybe that has been one of them. And you know what? Criticism sometimes, take it on the chin, suck it up and get on with it. No, fair point. <laughs> now, just to be fair as well, I I'm sure Bill Healy tried Stephen Rochford during the week and knowing Stephen Rochford, he's probably got the playbook out and he's working on the, uh, the All-Ireland final next weekend. Obviously, he disputes Bernard's point. He feels that that wasn't how it played out. So, as, as Bernard says, the suicide's to every story, but we'll, we'll move it on. Desi, you were telling me earlier, you've been at every Mayo Championship game this year. You've, you've seen every minute of every Championship game they've played. So you're in a good position to tell us. Are they, are they good enough? I mean, we're hearing that this Dublin team are the greatest team of all time. 
they're unbeatable and that the three in a row is, is their destiny. Is that the way you see it? Well, to be honest, early on in the year, they were very poor, like really poor. Sligo was poor, um, the Galway game. Um, and the, the Derry match, again, for long periods of that time, was really poor. First half against Clare, again, very lethargic, weren't going well. But as it was going along, I don't know, like the decisions, Stephen Rochester's was, was, decision was kind of being made firm. I think Jarrett fullback was struggling a little. I think if people were calling for Keith Higgins to be a bit more offensive against Cork, he took off Chris Barrett. I think that was a bad idea. He left maybe Andy Moore and, and Kevin McLaughlin on the bench to Roscommon game. So all of these things, as the year was going on, I think all the decisions that Stephen Rochester was kind of they were made firm in a way, the way things were set up and the way things were playing. And all of a sudden now, it's a very settled team. They're a very athletic team. They have you know, some of the best players in the country. And they're playing in Crow Park where they like to play in. So the, the, the whole landscape has changed from what I've seen earlier on the year. Once they got to Crow Park, Mayo were a different team. Um, can they compete 15 on 15? It's an equal match. Absolutely all day long. Mayo players are every bit as good as what you see in Dublin. The concern for me is that last year, Cormac Costello, you haven't even heard of him this year, Cormac Costello, come on, tired minds, tired bodies, nice silky player, got a couple of points. That's my worry. Have Mayo the quality on the bench that's going to make the big impact? I thought they were good, the subs, the last time against Curry. I thought they were very good, actually. But that's the question. Like, Bernard Brogan is going to explode when he gets on the pitch the next day because like, he's going to be frustrated. He, last year's All Ireland final, he had three full pa- pages in the program advertisements. He had a Volkswagen. He was driving down his Volkswagen to Super Value in his Benetti suit for the All Ireland final. Um, Jeremy Connolly, what about that lad when he gets on the pitch? Like, I'd imagine he won't start, but I imagine when he gets on the pitch as well. But that's the concern I have. 15 on 15, Mayo are incredible. They're, they're a brilliant bunch of players. As I said, you've seen them in, in each game they've played. If you had to pick out the turning point where, where you feel the whole season swung for them. When, when was it? It was the Roscommon replay. I think, I think they were probably really annoyed that Roscommon thought they were good enough to compete with Mayo. <laughs> and, uh, genuine, genuine. It was like they, were, they must have had a meeting somewhere where they're like, lads, we need to get our shit together because them Roscommon guys were very close to us. And I'd say it threatened them. I'd say it threatened their whole experience. They know that they're a serious outfit that really want all Ireland's. And Roscommon did very well to win the Connacht, but they're not at that league, not just yet. Now, maybe in a couple of years. But I think that's what motivated Mayo. The, the way they played that day, if they play like that Sunday week, there's no team in the country to stop them. John, well, what do you think of that point that's been made about the Dubs, that they're, they are unbeatable? And I mean, the, the, the odds for me are, are spectacularly exaggerated. Three to one outsiders in a yeah. two-horse race. I mean, the bookies don't often get it wrong, but, but they're a bigger price to beat Dublin than Tyrone were. Yeah, it's quite phenomenal, but justifiably so, Mike. They've, they've wiped the floor with, with everyone they've come up against. Everybody was looking forward to Tyrone putting them up to the, the asset test. I think, going back, they've, they've won their five championship games so far by 74 points. Desi won, like, reminding the bet Westmead by 31 there's not a team in the country that would be capable of doing that. But that is the proper way to go into it. They're two, I t- think they're two to five, if I'm not mistaken. The handicap betting is minus three. I had a quick look on Paddy Power there before I came up, just to see had anything changed. Um, but they are justifiably. But I suppose that the cautious thing from a Mayo point of view was the attitude Dublin haven't played anybody yet. They can only play with what's put in front of them. But trust me when I tell you, that they haven't come up against anything that Mayo are going to throw at them. The way the Mayo season has turned has been nothing short of miraculous. There was people asking. The defeat in Galway was heart-wrenching. And I thought, you know what? Is this, I keep slagging him and about it. And he says to me, what's the story with Mayo? He'd send me a text before a game. It's all part of the master plan. I used to keep telling him. He goes, what the fuck is this master plan you keep on about? But I still haven't told him, you know? But then you, 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 the games go on. And next thing, they're struggling. I, I, was, I was doing commentary for RTE, listening to the game on radio, coming for the Derry match. And I nearly crashed the car at the Tulsk crossing. I, Not oh, again, John. Again. Oh, jeez. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Don't but, mention yeah, the war. <laughs> don't mention it as right. It's nearly a year to the day. But, but their season has just grown. And there was people asking, genuine Mayo supporters, wanting Mayo put out of their misery. 
I won't. I, th- I think it's a brilliant roller coaster ride. Nobody could ever imagine what they've gone through. Game 10. Don't rule out game 11, by the way. Game 10. Don't rule out game 11. Game think of ten, the children, John. Yeah, but only think of the children, think of the schools, but think of, think of the just, this team. Think of the credit uh, unions. Think of the, yeah, <laughs> think, think of the wallet. But their, 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 their ride to this final has just been nothing short of a fairy tale. They were written off, and Desi mentioned it there a minute ago, but certainly the turning point was, who do these common dudes think they are coming up to our patch? Like, I think it may have played just shy of 30 games in Crow Park since 2011. The only ones that have played more, obviously, the dubs. But I think the Mayo are going to hammer and tongs go for it. I do uh, have the concern that Desi has the bench factor. You've got a couple of players of the year, and I, I watched the, I covered the the, um, the uh, Tyrone Dublin game on the radio, and I, I was watching. I do, as you well know, I look, look for a lot of stuff off the ball, and I watched Jim Gavin down for the the, the semi final when Dublin were beating the piss out of Tyrone, and I just watched him eyeballing Michael Darren McCauley and Brogan. And looking up and going, you know what? I'm going to get these boys gander up. I'm not even going to bring them on. That is my fear. 15 against 15, Mayo, more than capable. But look at our fellas deserve huge credit. But Dublin are justifiably favoured. Bernard, the, the me team you played on, more often than not, you, you had Dublin's number. When you look at this Dublin team and the team Gavin has built over the last few years, do they bear any resemblance to the Dublin teams you came up against? And would you love to get a crack at that Dublin full back line? Bernard it's in his really, heyday now, in his palm. Re- no, it's re- that's really irrelevant, but they're, they're, this team is way better. I, I take this your team point. Is way better, but it's, really better. it's on, lads. I think it's on. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is, and, and, and I'm just trying to share something, is I, I lost two all Ireland's by two points, and there's not a week goes by I don't think of them. And we thought at the time we should have won them, it was close and all that, but there's a... To lose in a final by a point or two and not getting over the line, there's a huge difference. It's actually, there's a huge difference. Like, for a county to be in seven semi-finals in a row is just remarkable. It's extraordinary. And I have incredible regard for Mayo, and I'm supporting them. And for football, and beating the dubs. I hope the G's you beat them blue back. Fellas, there. Um, I know this is on live. He's banging it into okay. reverse here, Nolan. No, no, no. But <laughs> Ronan Agar, it was a brilliant piece that Ronan Agar did earlier on this year, and he was speaking about Mayo not getting over the line. And Mayo are capable, and I don't think it's this t- that Dublin are, are that far ahead of Mayo. Dublin players do not like playing Mayo. The Dublin team fear Mayo more than anyone realises. I promise you, they're the only team that can remotely stay with them physically every way. For me, the management team, since the last match, have to move to a new level, tactically, because Dublin are. People might not realise the way Dublin are playing offensively up front this year is amazing. They had the, they had the whole of Carton House screened off. It, it just, I think it was just the last couple of days, Mickey Connie was in there. The, the attention to detail that they go through tactically is amazing. If Mayo think they're just going to show up, Take them on with football and see who wins. That's not going to happen. So there's a huge responsibility in the management, but also Mayo have a massive, massive chance. And that's why, with no disrespect, people might wonder why people, you know, Mayo not getting across the line. Not, when you don't get across the line, it's a bit harder. But that one point is massive. And for this match at the weekend, I think Mayo have to go to a new place physically, target Dublin players, and they have to do for once whatever it takes. And I mean this sincerely. We had to do it in 86. We couldn't beat Dublin for 20 years. And we knew it was a horrible game, the Leinster final. We said we had to do whatever it takes just to win that match to break them. And Mayo have to do that on Sunday. Whatever it takes. I make no apologies. And if that means being dirty, whatever it may be. And I think Mayo have been a little bit too nice to Dublin teams in big games. With all due respect. And I tell you, they need to turn that on its head, get the matchups right, and be ready for when Dublin empty their bench. No one has been ready for when the guys come off the bench to have a set of tactics for the three or four guys. And Dermot Connolly, I believe, will have virtually no influence in this final. I don't think he'll play. Unless they're in serious trouble, it'll be a couple of minutes. He was awfully off the pace when he came on. And I don't think he's going to have an influence. Keegan takes Kilkenny, I think that's one. But get the matches right and do, just do. They're well capable of doing it. Mayo are far better than last year. I believe. 
Look at the way it's after transparent as he's talking about it. There's just so many players playing better. Mayo's weak points, there's far less of them this year. And just become meaner. And just meaner and do whatever it fucking I'm just, takes. I'm just laughing at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad now I asked that question. No, I, I'm, I'm just laughing at Bernard. When a mead man says break, break him, that's break bones, by the way. <laughs> Isn't that right? That is right. That is right. <laughs> break him. Some of them. Some of them. Allegedly. Desi, Ber- Bernard is saying, you know, take it to a new level. Uh, Absolutely. Bring it to a new level. Yeah, Tim Boys what about, what about the six or seven teams this year already that have tried and failed miserably? No, there's, uh, Bernard's right. He, he's right in the fact that Mayo are the team that Dublin don't like to play. Why? Why is that? Physically, they're equally as strong. Athletically, they can go all day with them. They have huge experience in their teams. They've huge know-how. They've built that up over a long number but of years. Mayo and haven't beaten them since the 2012 semi-final. So for all the talk that Dublin yeah. don't like playing them, At Mayo like, haven't been able to beat them in League or Championship for, what, five years? Yeah, the level that they're at... Mayo are the only team that can capably beat them, I would say, at the minute for a couple of years. But... They have, like Mayo have the players, like they have the quality that other counties just don't have. Um, they'll have to find something. In fairness, they'll have to find a tactic that might work. If there is a little bit of vulnerability, I would say the Dublin full back line, Kildare tested them. There was a goal there that went in. I think Paddy Brophy might have got it. Um, Bernard's right. Like, bring it to them physically. See what they have to do. Now, the one thing with Dublin teams now is they can play tough. They can play good football. They can play defensive football. They're very dynamic. That's the worry. But at the same time, Joe McQuillan's referee in the game. Do you know, he's going to let it go. And I would test everything, test in any aspect of the game. You have to ask the questions. This is their chance. This is, their, this is the year to do it. Psychologically, John, the fact that Mayo haven't beaten Dublin in five years, for these lads, you know them well, Tom Parsons and, and company, is that an issue? I mean, we're talking here about inches, millimetres, the lads are saying, between the two teams. That could be a big factor, no? I don't think so. I think they're, they're just raring to go. And uh, they will take hope, albeit a little hope, last year's drawn game. All you can account for two own goals, Mike. I think the score was 2-9, was it, to 15 points? We weren't able to contain ourselves on the radio anyway. But, you know, we gave Dublin... The, we held... Our back line held the most prolific forward line of all time. Scored us for 29 minutes, was it, in that final? 29 minutes. They're the little glimmers that you, that you will go on and, uh, and they will hope that they will be able to produce that again. But it's, it's, um, you know, it's a fantastic occasion, one that everyone is looking forward to. But I just think that you, you've just got to leave everything on the field. It's that simple. You, you mentioned the drawing game there, John, and you yeah. mentioned about not being able to contain yourself on the radio. <laughs> That, of course, was the, the week you ended up on the front page of the Star, the back page, and the front of the Herald, and I think the back four pages, because you were witness to the I had to get riot an es- gate. Was I had to get an escort in, actually, for the replay as well, which yeah, was t- quite t- cool. Tell everybody here, John, how you ended up on the front of the Star. Well, you know, it's quite funny, because um, at the time, uh, I allegedly didn't see a whole lot, but all I can tell you is, uh, with the Mayo Ultras that are out there, Mike, the next time I see something, I'm going to keep it to myself. Um, yeah, look, at I happen to watch a little bit of niggly pulling and dragging in a tunnel, but I apparently didn't see it by all accounts. So um, with a few of the nice uh, messages I got on social media thereafter, um, I got one particular guy uh, tweeted me to say, I am proud of every Mayo person. Sadly, at Shell Mulhern and John Casey aren't too. <laughs> Harsh. Harsh. I met Michelle, told Michelle Mulhern about it as well. So, yeah, but look, at it's... it's uh, I'm going to keep, the next time I see anything uh, uh, untowards to uh, anybody, I'm going to keep it myself. Bernard, the two big questions that, that everyone around Mayo are talking about are, should Stephen Rochford start Paddy Durkin? And where do you play Aidan O'Shea? What are your thoughts on those two? Well, as long as he doesn't drop Aidan O'Shea. First of all, my worry would be, my, my, worry, would, no, my worry would be that <laughs> have they too much time, the things that have happened... And I'm so in, I, I'm fascinated to see what the management will come up with. They do have to come up with something. They really, they really, really do. Where will they play it, no shade? A couple of goals. No, no, no. You know, and I have to say, the Mayo public are unbelievably forgiven people. After what took place in that final last year, and I mean, 
you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I would say is that I think they've been incredible. The supporters, the way they support them. And Stephen Rochard is a very lucky man to be in this position after what happened last year and dropping the keeper. That is a fact. But you look at that. You think so? Absolutely. No question about it. It, it, it. I believe other managers would have been sacked, absolutely, and been sacked for less. There's no, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But just to come back to the point I'm going to make, if you look at it, four of the uh, seven defenders, goalkeepers, six defenders, are all stars. Mayo's backline will contain Dublin. I honestly believe that. And Aidan O'Shea, where did they play him? I believe, look at the angles of running, the movement, the foot passing I've seen since the, let's say, replay of uh, common match in that, and two Kerry matches. I haven't seen that with Aidan O'Shea in the forward line. And he's been brilliantly, a team player this year, been superb. But Aidan O'Shea has to lay off the ball, and Aidan O'Shea has to have a big game. He has to have a big game for Mayo to win. That's huge. I would play him sort of in around midfield, slightly behind on occasions, slightly in front. But to land Aidan O'Shea in the forward line, I hope they don't do that, because I think it will kill this Mayo forward line to de after developing what they've become good at. I think they've been, Jason Doherty to me has been a revelation. Yeah. Tom Parsons has not got the credit he deserves. He's been magnificent. But Jason Doherty has been brilliant. Andy Moore, incredible. But if they can keep playing like that and Aidan O'Shea can impose himself physically further at the field, I think that would be huge. O'Shea did bail us out of the muck though, Bernard, in three games in the qualifiers. Yeah. Absolutely. Playing up front, so it, it is a big conundrum for Rashford. He's got to have a big game. What to do, like. He's got to have a big game. Just to pick up on something Bernard said there, John, because I do genuinely find it amazing. First season, we lose to the greatest team of all time in a replay by a point. And the manager could, and possibly in Bernard's opinion, should have been sacked. No, I didn't say should. I said, well, the count people have been sacked for less, is what I said. You, would you agree? Seems um, very harsh. You lose a replay by a point. Stephen Rochford has been well known to, to pull rabbits uh, out of the hat in, on occasion. He felt he'd done what was something correct. I think the buzzword around the All-Ireland final replay last year was, well, the two buzzwords, I should say, were low trajectory, i.e. a kick out. He's made big calls. He got laughed at and scorned for playing Aidan O'Shea in full back against Kerry in the first game. Some... Ludermon writing for the Irish Independent called him a donkey, which I found very offensive. He's a human being. Um, that call proved to be a masterstroke for a replay. So Rochford has been brave. Give him a bit of credit where it's true. Should he be sacked because he changes the goalkeepers? Or absolutely not. He's trying new things. And I'm just dying John, to know. John, dropping the goalie last year cost Mayo. Absolutely, Bernard. But that's the point. hindsight, uh, but you though, won't get away with another. No, you hindsight, get away another one. Hindsight is a great won't. thing. Hindsight is a great thing. It, it couldn't. We we were working like we myself and Mike were working for the game for the local radio, like two supporters. Like it, you couldn't have made it up. And then Robbie Hindley pulled down black car like. Every nightmare. It must have been a manager's I nightmare. The two goals. And listen, and, the two and goals, everyone and in the country was suffering nightmare. with you. But the point I, said, but I'm saying, I said at the start, the first question you asked, if the Mayo management can really, and McIndy, and that can really go tactically to a new level. I, I'd say, do you, send, do you tell me when in a big game, Johnny Cooper has been bullied, Philip Mann has been bullied, and be earmarked and targeted, and the job done in there, guys. Dublin do it. They're, they're unbelievable. They're the most cynical team in the country, but by a mile. And people don't get it. But I would flip it back on targeting some of their players that are their leaders. And if you can put a few of them on their backside and really take the game physically from the start and be ready tactic. And I'd have to commend Rochford on the second day, the way they used Aidan O'Shea, and I genuinely mean this, in the blocks of going in and out seven or eight minutes, I thought was brilliant. Yeah. He got him into the game. A phys physically and he had to be in it not like the first day and they moved him back in they moved him out they moved him in that was super and he deserves great credit for that but you will not get away with making a move like happened last year dropping the goalie they need to go to a different level completely but physically the Mayo guys are as strong I see them straight if you beside them they can match any of those Dublin players and just whatever it takes I'm telling you whatever it takes that could be 12 against 12, 13 against 13. They could have to do that. Rochford, Rochford could make another big call. It's like 83 all over yeah. again. Who's your mole and Mayo, by the way, feeding you all the information? You know, more, stuff, 
You do have no more stuff no, about Mayo it, than me. Do. Well, I'm actually, I'm supporting Mayo on Sunday. You, need, you better believe it. But <laughs> it just, sometimes I don't think they've done enough homework on the opposition and targeting certain players and things. Dublin do it all the time. You'll be sure, sure though, that there'll be a good few of the Mayo fellas that'll have Dublin players on their arses on please, Sunday. Please, God. Oh, they will, please for sure. God. Desi, I want to move it on, but I just, I just feel there's still, there's still a little, a few loose threads to be tied up. Picking up on, on, on Bernard's point again there, I mean, I can't help but think that replay, you lose it by a point. It's very easy to hang it on one call, but you've got Lee Keegan's black card. You've got a couple of refereeing decisions that didn't go Mayo's way. The, 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 the John Small trip, obviously, was a, was a big call as well. Morris Deegan admitted afterwards he got it wrong. Is it not too easy to just hang it all on the goalkeeper switch? And you lose by a point. It was a crazy decision. It was a crazy decision. Uh, like, it wasn't as if David Clark was playing bad. He got an all-star last year. Um, I suppose it depends what's going on with players and the dynamics. And, you know, like, the midfielders might have been calling for a certain type of kick-out and it just wasn't happening. Like, you're talking Stephen Cluxon's getting the kick-outs out after two or three seconds. How quick can David Clark get them out? Like, he's having an excellent season again this year. There's nothing between them. But, like, that, it's... Players are dictating and they're saying to Stephen Rochford, they're influenced decisions. And I would imagine that there was an influence there before the game saying that, you know, that they wanted to, a certain type of kick out quicker, they need to get the kick outs quicker. And that's what happened, definitely, yeah. You think players had an influence? I would imagine so, yeah. Like, I, a call like that had to come from somewhere. There was no major need to change David Clark, who was an all star goalie, and then put in Rob Henley who hadn't played up to that point. I thought, it was a, I thought it was a mad decision myself at the time and it proved, ultimately it proved to be a strange decision. John, in the last few minutes of the drawn game, David Clark's kickouts were attacked by Dublin. I mean, I'm guessing that was the reason behind it. Desi's throwing a, a smoke bomb in from left field here. Yeah, um, how do you answer that really, Bear? I, I, I learned from before by saying too much, you get in trouble, but I certainly don't think that can be f further from the truth. Desi, were you suggesting that the O'Shea, is, as the word was, picked the goalie? <laughs> Jeez, I didn't mention that. Either. Did you not? <laughs> Hold on here, Your Honour. <laughs> Did you take that trouble? from Desi's uh, comment? <laughs> Mike, you threw it at me. You stay you, no, look, at, I don't, I, look at, it's been well documented. I think Aidan O'Shea mentioned it there in one of the... Uh, during a league game, I think it was actually Billy Joe Padden asked them the hard question. So yourself and your brothers picking the team, but I, I don't believe for one second that that's true. But look at hindsight. I, I said it before the last time. Right now, that call proved catastrophic from a Mayo point of view. It couldn't have worked out worse. Um, had it worked out and Robbie Hindley bombed a few kickouts, saved a couple, you know. May all Ireland champions. It would have been the greatest call ever. That's what I know. Desi is shaking his head there, but. Yeah, but, but Rochford, you know, people were, were you one of those, Desi, suggesting that it was a bad call playing Aidan O'Shea full back against Kerry? First yeah, day you were, but was, second yeah. day you weren't, you see, so that's, you know, things work out. If you make, you make a big call and you live by the sword and die by the sword, that's simple, and he has died by the sword after. Yeah, simple. I, I do feel like I'm working for the county board here, lads, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> trying to balance the books a small bit. Job. In, in <laughs> fairness, you're, you're, you're throwing scuds in from left field, yeah. but, um, John, I mean, you've played in you've played in all Ireland finals. Well, I was there. 96, 97. Okay, 97 didn't go so well in particular, but I mean, what's what's it what's it like? What's it like that whole experience? When did 90 did 96 go well? <laughs> well, look, 96 was better than 97. I can't remember either, Mike. Brain, it's called brain freeze. Yeah, what, what's the whole experience like? Though the the the, the, the build up, the buzz the match day and, and, and the aftermath? Well, it's mental. It, it, it quite frankly is mental. I had to leave town here before a couple of the games, the shop. You just had to leave. It, it, was, it was crazy, but it was something we didn't experience before. So you have to bear, we, we played Kerry in the 96 All-Ireland semi-final. Um, and there was probably only about 40,000 at the game. So we hadn't had a full Crow Park. I had never, we hadn't played in front of a full house in Crow Park before. All of a sudden you realize communication levels are, are they're, they're non-existent basically. I, I just never remember doing a warm-up trying to tell Ray Dempsey something from about two feet behind him. And he couldn't hear me. I thought, Jesus Christ, the, the echo. And, but this isn't any, any problem for the current players. But the whole build-up, I think the fact that we're used to it, fourth final in six years, which is a phenomenal record really. We don't get carried away in the rigmarole. The players are in their own little bubble, but it, 
you just go back to the Mayo press night and the Dublin press night, the way things are conducted now, the manager offers three players, four players, ones that won't say a lot, as you well know from trying to get words out of them, pick up the guys that'll stay quiet and sit in the seat and do nothing. Years ago, it was so different. You were all landed into a room. Anybody could have a piece of you. Anybody, you could say anything on any given day. Somebody could walk in off the street. You could have four or five people chatting to you. You could say something wrong by accident. Front page of the paper or back page of the sports page of the following day. So it is a crazy build up. But as I mentioned way back, you've got two teams that are so well versed in it. And like Mickey, I think, is going to tell us later on about he, he ran into a couple of the dubs in Carton House yesterday. And it's, it's just gone to a new level. I mean, the professionalism and the way that the players are, you know, they're nearly basically told what to say. They've all got media coordinators, uh, people Jim Gavin certainly has. One would have probably a bad personality. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic uh, occasion for players to, uh, to, get, uh, to play in the biggest occasion of all in Ireland. Massive. Did you enjoy the All-Ireland Finals, Bernard? You know, you hear some guys saying they get nervous it maybe passes them by because they just want to get through it or, or did you love the big the big stage the no, spotlight I used, to, I used to lock myself away for I was very got very strange for the type of guy I am I actually went to I, I didn't like meeting people for a few days beforehand I was from an intermediate club and it was actually incredible myself and Robbie O'Malley small little club in East Mead uh, St. Colum Kills but the, the, the midday before the 87 final my mother comes into me because we'd always meet we'd have mass and a meal and Sean Boyle and he drive, used to drive us mad. He'd take about 10 hours for... Our team meetings were about 8 to 10 hours between meetings, mass and meals. And he'd leave at 5 and be home at 12 or 1 o'clock. That was the way it was. But she says to me, there's a load of kids outside. There's about 50 kids at a gate. We're not in a town, we're out in the country. I says to ma'am, I'm not going out there to the middle of the mall. She says, you can't. You can't leave those people out there. Says, ma'am, I'm not going out there to the mall. So when we'd won the intermediate final in 83, Sean Boyle came over to the dinner that night and he... He brought myself and Robbie O'Malley onto the panel in 83. And he was incredible for detail and how close he got to the parents and the families and all the end of it there. But I used to lock myself away and we won two in a row and then we lost two in a row. So I, my memories, I, I know both sides of it. And it's all Ireland finally and the Mayo players. That's why I cannot say or speak highly enough of what they are achieving and how lucky you are. But at the end of the day, forget about last year in Rochford and all that, it's next Sunday and the only thing, they have to find some way of getting over the effing line. And I, it's become a nearly, I'm nearly become obsessed with it. And that's all that matters. we have been there so many times because it would be truly a shame. Higgins, what a legend. I mean, Boyle, guys like that there. You know, the O'Shea's, McLaughlin, unsung heroes. Not to have a medal for what they've done. They, they must come up with some way of just getting the job done. I think they can actually do it on Sunday. I genuinely do. And Dublin are beatable. Dublin have played no one this year. They've had no contest. And I think that's where the Mayo may catch them on Sunday and catch them early. If it's a tight game, Mayo will win it. My only hope is that Dublin don't get a couple of scores. But just the Mayo management and the players have to find a way of just getting the job done. That's all that matters. I'm going to shoot around in a second and just get the, the definitive prediction. I think Bernard is edging towards maybe a, a green and red win. But before I do, Desi, the, the boys played under a few great characters and managerial legends Bernard obviously with Sean Boylan and, and John here played under, under John Mahan but you arguably played under the, the greatest legend of them all Paddy O'Shea and I know everyone would leave here tonight disappointed if they didn't get one classic Paddy story especially from 04 the year you, you made history yeah um, I suppose any time you have a manager like Paddy it was, it was incredible if he came into any any establishment in all of the country, as soon as he walked in the door, there's Paddy O'Shea and people want to talk to him. Uh, generally, we'd have our team meetings early, uh, maybe seven to eight, go to bed, lads, so Paddy can go out for the night. That's the way it worked. Um, I remember we went up to, I suppose we were kind of this, you know, like when you're not used to winning, you don't know how to um, compose yourself or how to behave properly and things like that. So I remember we played Tyrone up there and that was when Mickey Hart was, he had a really good team and we got walloped by 30 points or something like that. 
and straight away the boys are putting on the video on the bus back home like blazing saddles you know something ridiculous and we're all laughing and joking after the game like thinking Jesus this is so Paulie got up that I remember he got up and he just said you know what you're pathetic you're a disgrace the whole lot you don't have a clue what it's like to be a winner like genuinely really annoyed that this is the way we were carrying on the game was over two minutes and here we are laughing and joking at blazing saddles like pathetic stuff really Um he was they thought he was going to get an OBE out before Easter you would have heard that Bernard in Westmead and because he wasn't around much you see he wasn't the most reliable leader you know that kind of way so because he wasn't around much and we were losing games um, they thought he was going to get the OBE out before Easter but he held on and do you know what the summer evenings came in Paddy got togged out in shorts and I swear to God it was like this man just totally transformed because he knew the first game against Offaly was in Crow Park he knew if he won that the second game was in Crow Park and once he was playing championship games in Crow Park he was a different man now we ultimately ended up winning the Leinster it was crazy so beating Dublin with 70,000 people you know and all the heroes that's there now brilliant scenes and all like, and every time we win it was a big occasion Like, but he had to get us settled down and bring us away but the thing with Pawdy is um, he didn't really get to know players that well everybody would be a Joe or like five lads would be Joe or you know like <laughs> there'd be another five yeah. lads would be he knew, he knew the good players kind of thing you know that kind of way like come on wait now we're in now. So, he, actually, he actually didn't know some of the players names yeah he didn't know some of the players names so we won't get into that right That's a, you can if you want Desi yeah so I tell you what we're going up to play Dublin 70,000 people uh the Dubs first 15 minutes Jesus couldn't get near them they're like Jason Sherlock Alan Brogan running rings around us like and what Pawdy he settled down we got kind of got a couple of points down coming into half time so Pawdy comes over to one of the boys he goes and what Pawdy likes to do real old fashioned stuff to- towel you down ice a little, t- a little cloths and ice and he'd be rubbing you down Jesus Christ Mike you're unbelievable today Jesus you're feckin the best game you've ever played you're doing mighty I want the same in the second half unbelievable but then one that of the was, John, oh, by the way, one of the selectors one of the selectors comes over to Potty and go Potty that's Russell Casey he wasn't playing in the first half <laughs> And he wasn't. And he did give him a rub. <laughs> Your man was just lying there getting a rub. <laughs> this is brilliant now because when he came up to Westmead, the biggest problem Desi might remember at the time is he couldn't get selectors. Oh, he was some crack, I can tell you. He was the best crack He's ever. He was unbelievable. But, so he came to a couple of us and he came to me. And he came to the house and I knew him quite well from before that. So, and he thought my wife was the reason I wasn't, maybe I was edging why I wouldn't do it. So he, comes back, he said, I'm coming back up on Friday to you to do your house here and we'll have a drink and we'll have a chat. So he comes up with a, this most incredible piece of jewellery. Now, I know he didn't fucking pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> like, where he got it, I didn't ask him. To my wife. And he sits down and he says, Madeline, there you are. He says, Charlie Hoy always tells me the way to get to a man if you want him to do something is get to the wife. So this was, and my kids at that stage, we were young enough at that stage, right, whatever. So she... Looked at the jewellery, she kept the jewellery, and the only problem was she tried to kick him out of the house four days later. She couldn't get him out. He drank for three days. <laughs> three days, and I went with him. And it was the best three days I ever fucking had. <laughs> so, unbelievable. But the, be- the best crack was when he, w- he was at a function all night, and I collected him the next morning. He hadn't been in a fucking bed. No, he was happy to know. Yeah, he read the, the, the bullseye sweets oh, all the time. Oh, my Jesus, and eating these herbs and everything like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> He's drunk again. <laughs> I was going to tell that I forgot this is on the air. I'm not going to tell this. <laughs> I was on the saw the red light. Oh, jeez, I, I did forgot about that joke. Some characters are right. And you didn't go in as a selector, no? I didn't, no. I didn't go in After all that. Oh, jeez. The other guy, he yeah, asked Spike Fagan, the great Spike Fagan. But the big gold ball was on in the Mullingar Park. Do you remember that? Yeah. And Spike was to give him his decision that night. And I was, Joe Connolly was mega because Paddy got such a stir going. He packed the place, if you might remember this. But he came drunk. He came jarred to the place, right? So I was with him. We meet Spike in the hallway. And Spike's wife, Carol, was with, was with him. And he comes up to him. But he was loaded. Spike didn't notice. And he says, he goes, oh, Paddy, I'm not, I'm not going to do that job. Right, and there was about 50 around. He says, 
you loser. You're always a loser, he says. Get out of my way. <laughs> that was it, Spike Fagan in the middle of the hotel. That was Spike told. That was it, end of story. It's unbelievable. Lads, I'm watching the clock here. It's all, we're up against it. I just want to do a quick round the houses. Desi, oh, you're, you're in the heart of Mayo. Here I now. know, actually, I'm thinking, oh, Jesus. But I don't want to say You've got to tell us something we don't want to hear. Like, I, yeah. I know by you. Look, at 15 on 15, Mayo, or absolutely. I just feel like that Mac Manimum, you know, even Owen O'Gara, like, you don't think he's much of a footballer, but he's he adds something. Conley on the bench, Brogan on the bench. I just, for that reason, I think just doubled by a couple of points. Bernard, when you boiled it all down? I kept him strongly last year. I, re- I really did. I put my house on Mayo last year to win. I was convinced I would beforehand. Um, I did. Okay, if you're watching Mayo during the years, Desi says, I just think at the moment, at some stage, a team has to arrive and, and, and their destiny. I think it could be Sunday. I don't think Dublin are quite as good as they've looked. I mean, you've got to look at, look at the way Tyrone set up and how poor they were. There was no contest and there's been no, none of the games were really a contest apart from that. None. So they have not been tested. And if they bit a look, rub it a green, tactically, no crazy decisions and get it right, they're set up in the matchups. I think they can win by a point or two. I do. I, I'm a bit hesitant and the bench, I do respect what the lads are saying, the bench is massive. How may are going to counteract that with 10 minutes to go, 50 minutes to go is a big one. But I do believe, I think they'll have to start Dur- Durkin. I think that's a big one. I don't know the team or anything like that. Can they leave afford to leave Durkin off the, with his pace? I don't think they can afford to do that. But if they start well, what I'd love to see is Mayo going ahead. No team has gone on the front foot with Dublin five or six points ahead. Then I, you're going to see a completely different Dublin team. And that's if they can do that, they can win. John, we leave the last word to you. I know from working with you over the years, your, your heart and your head don't always be in sync. But <laughs> what's your feeling about this one? Well, I agree, completely agree with the boys there. I suppose the thing that uh, you admire about Dublin, and I suppose something we didn't really, uh, they've learned to be so patient. When things aren't working out, they recycle the ball, they go back around again. Um, but this has come to the but factor. The only tackle that Tyrone put in on, the, on, on Dublin was in the 72nd minute when they were 16 points down or whatever it was, and they engulfed Kieran Kilkenny, I think. And I was baffled. I was beside Oshie McConville at the game, and I went, that's too late, but you can be guaranteed Mayo won't be waiting until the 72nd minute to, to press them. Completely agree with Desi on the, on the 15 against 15. I worry about the bench, but I think if Mayo can put, and I learned from before as well, I, I was actually asked um, last year at a joe.ie gig to, um, to build up the opponents as much as possible, to which I got horrendous abuse. I hope they paid you more than Brady. Oh, Jesus, yeah, I got absolutely massive abuse, but I was only doing it for the cause, as the fellow says. Hart, of course, wants Mayo to win, and I feel if they can push up on Cluxton, knock, as Bernard says, break their legs, kind of, knock the shit out of them, and we have forwards that will knock the shit out of them Dublin backs, frustrate them a little bit. Here's hoping, but it might take a replay. So two for Mayo, kind of. One for Dublin. I think, Desi, that means you've taken over from Bernard as the pantomime villain in Mayo, yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your status is secure. Fire stuff at Desi. <laughs> I know uh, Bill Healy is planning to do a Q&A now, but uh, let's give the boys the round of applause that is our Bernard, John and Desi. Thanks, Mike. I'm actually down here beside Tom and Carmel Parsons. Tom obviously his parents, so be remiss not to get the first word of them. So, Tom, I suppose, looking forward to the match. It's been revealed this week that Tom has put on a bit of weight. Has Carmel changed from the Kerpings to the Roosters ahead of the big match? Oh, no, the, Tom is down there at the moment, down after uh, a session in Castle Bar today. I think he was in the physiotherapy, getting his legs rubbed down and that. But, um, yeah, he's down there, he's relaxed, he's quite confident that they're not afraid of Dublin. They're going to give it all, and um, I think they're, they're fairly confident that that, that, that um, things will go down there. And Carmel, I suppose, having a son in the team, we all know, of course, how the players prepare, but as parents, what's your routine the week it's the match? Is Tom doing a bit of yoga, or how do you relax? I was just reading there about the, 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 the bit of waste to talk about, and I'm just thinking maybe I'd give him too, ban- too many bananas, you know, in his time. <laughs> uh, no, um, Tom is very calm and, you know. 
Tom's junior and senior <laughs> are very calm. And, uh, you know, Tom is, Tom is Tom, very relaxed and looking forward to the occasion. That's all I can say about it. <laughs> Fair play. Thanks for that. So we'll just, uh, we'll move up the floor here. <clears throat> watch the floor part like the Red Sea when I come towards people. But I'll ask uh, Alan Crane here, who's the sponsor of Charlestown, if he has a question for any of the panel. Uh, hello, panel. Uh, you're all very welcome to Charlestown this evening. Great to see you all here. Uh, place is looking fantastic. Um, I know with interest there that you were saying that, you know, Mayo can take Dublin on 15 against 15, no problem. Um, but a question for you there was, how many of the Mayo team, the starting Mayo 15, would actually make the Dublin 15? I, I wouldn't mind an honest answer there uh, to that one, if you wouldn't mind, please. Who wants to take that one? Let's well, can we pick one at a time, maybe? Yes. I'll start. Andy Moran. <laughs> Ask me Monday. <laughs> No, listen, no, I, I put it in. A good question. No, no, it's a very good question. Key Higgins, definitely. Yeah. Lee Keegan. Keegan, yeah. Boyle for me. Tom Parsons, the yeah. football he's playing yeah. at midfield. And Andy Morney said up front. Um, any other forwards? And Killian, you'd have to have Killian. Yeah. Like he's and one and goal, 53 points. Like. Yeah. If Killian O'Connor actually. And Morney's 321 this year. Like he was a right off two years ago. Now he's joined favour for Player of the Year. Lads, like he's it's a phenomenal. It's, it's all right to talk, lads. I hear a dog barking outside, and if I was Bernard or Desi, I'd be worried enough. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Who let the dogs out, lads? <laughs> It sounds like it's getting closer as well. <laughs> I, know, I know that. I know the sound of that. <laughs> so you're saying you're saying. I think. Ah, yeah, there's plenty of players. We're talking about five, the, five players. Tom Parsons. Dublin have got a serious bit of role. You know, they've, they've got a phenomenal. Yeah, it's a good question. But there's a, yeah, but you're, there's most so yeah yeah the, yeah. You know, Eamon, you're next. <laughs> yeah, that's a good for who? For Andy Moore and Paddy Andrews. Aidan O'Shea is probably in the, in the running for Football of the Year as well. There's even enough. there's even Dublin players on the bench that would probably all the Dublin players on the bench that would walk onto the Mayo team. This is definitely one of those questions that will be still going strong. Thanks, I'd say, Alan. The nightclub opens later on. But yeah, the boys have had a good stab at it. Billy, you ready to go again? Yeah, I'm down here, Mike. I've gone through the crowd. I found Ginger Tiernan, as many would know. Uh, Ginger Tiernan. <laughs> you hear about midfielders from Mayo. Played in Crow Park. Mark Kieran Whelan has had man of the matches in Crow Park. Fantastic Mayo career. But enough about David Brady. Ginger. <laughs> Have you a question for the boys there ahead of the big match? Um. Biggest uh, shock I have to be a 15 year in here to listen to John. <laughs> Ginger, Ginger, I told you at the Blitz today I'd have charged you 750 if you paid, you miserable <laughs> yoke. But hold on, he, he has a genuine question. No, Does he? Say, no, the only thing I'd say is um, that with John, we soldiered together for many years along with Aiden down there. Um, the only thing I would say, I agreed completely with Bernard. And my attitude, as anyone knows around here, is the attitude is if we go into Dublin, we win, we hit them hard. Um, no fear. Like I've seen them on Facebook and on Twitter about Joe McWilliam um, being the referee. And, and it's time for me, all, in my opinion, to get out of that bullshit because it's, if we win complaining about the referee, me, me old lads and this me old bunch of lads the last six years have absolutely no fear whatsoever of Dublin. No matter what Dublin bring on, I think we can match them without a shadow of a doubt. And if they do match them and bring it on a little bit more, push up, I think what the lads have said is great, Daisy and Bernard, push up in the kick and match them pound for pound. I watched the 2013 final the other night. In the first 20 minutes, we, we dominated them. We didn't complicate things. Football is a simple, simple game, as we all know here in Charleston. It's where we always played it football, football, football. But you've got to be aggressive. I think we brought it to a new level at club level in 2001 because we were very simply, we were aggressive. We had all lovely football. It's a bit like the team in our days. Be aggressive. And Bernard is 100% right. Ginger, you've what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> Ginger has no hair, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, Bernard has never met Ginger Tiernan. There could be some crack here yet. 
John Casey, could you imagine if Ginger Tiernan and Philly McMahon wandered into the same patch of grass? Whoa, 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 Ginger. Uh, Philly. Could you imagine Ginger and Philly McMahon if they ever happened to cross paths on a football field? A frightening prospect. They'd yeah. be only one winner, the boys reckon, down the back. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I know who I'd be back in anyway, but yeah, look at Ginger, look at, he's, he's, he's ploughed hard for us and he's, he's been a great servant and he knows all about winning, so... Um, but the point Ginger is making, I think, no, Ginger, I'm batting for you here. I thought he was fantastic. Bring question. intensity, bring aggression. Oh, agree. I, 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 I assume, unlike Ginger sometimes, controlled aggression. Oh, yeah. But I don't think Martin Murphy is reffing. <laughs> yeah. If Martin Murphy was reffing now, it could get out of hand. Well, if, yeah, Ginger's old friend. Well, Ginger would have a lot of a lot of growth for a lot of referees around. It's it's interesting. It's, I'm surprised. The only people he seems to be on name to name basis referees. He doesn't have a clue of opponents. But um, I completely I completely agree with him there. And the boys have said it like, but Dublin. This is the the hope. Mayo will have to play super well to win the All Ireland. No question. Most of the players will have to play nine out of ten performances. No question. But we're living in that hope that Dublin. The, 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 you know, not tested, but Dublin aren't going to be sent back, knocked on their arses, as the boys were saying early on. That's what we're hoping for. And I still have that slight little worry about emptying the bench and emptying these players of the years they have and everything. But if Mayo can have them frustrated, maybe Dublin, Jim Gavin maybe has to make a few early calls, give a few people the curly finger early on and say, geez, this isn't working out for us. That's what we're hoping for. Bill, that's the best we have for the moment. All right, Mike, I've just one couple more down the back here. We're looking at the, the diehards. Uh, hold on here. We have Kieran O'Connell there from uh, Mayo. He's been at every match bar at the Roscommon game when he was in New York. Kieran, have you a question for the panel? <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit starstruck. So He's never seen Bernard in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a question? Hold on. Cosy Gallagher there. Cosy Gallagher. Soldiered with Ginger for many years. God, they're all going fucking shy at the minute. Hold on. Paul Mulligan will have a question here. He'll have a question. Another angry man like Ginger. <laughs> Not as angry as Ginger, I'm afraid. Um, no, thanks, lads. Uh, it, great to be there now on the, on the panel tonight. Um, just, you know, I kind of look at games and I look at our weaknesses when I look at them. And going into the game, are we, or have we enough for Dublin's running game from, from the back? I think early on in the championship we probably struggled with a few teams running at us um, and lads tracking men. So do we have enough? Uh, I'm a big fan and I'm a huge fan, not to be too patriotic, but I love Tom Parsons. I think he's the best defensive midfielder in the country and I think we rely on him an awful lot. Do we have enough for that double attacking half back line to, well, to get I, over the line? Did, I don't know. There's a lot of footage doing, doing the rounds uh, since yesterday. I don't know did Desi or Bernard see it or not about last year's All-Ireland. It's like somebody in the Mayo Ultra supporters group got a little montage or a little, uh, bit of footage of the, the, tack, the tackling Aiden actually sent it, yeah, the tackling that, so I think Dublin actually fair rather than the other way around, I think Dublin fair Mayo's running game a little bit more than the other way around, because when Mayo get the ball or, or any of the lads get the ball at midfield, you just see this little red wave and you mentioned Paddy Dirk and Bernard you mentioned Keegan, you mentioned Higgins Boil and they come like a red wave, and it, it just showed uh, Dublin players off the ball. Now, they did get away with it, and look at if you'd need to do it to get away with it. But I think it's actually the Dublin that are more worried about, about Mayo's running game than the other way around. The only one point, other point I would like to make is that, and you know, go back to the, the high ball that's happened a couple of times with Mayo on goals, but there's a slight little self destruct button on a few occasions that has happened Mayo, you know, just at the wrong time, giving a ball away in control last year. It happened against Roscommon the first the, the, the lapse of concentration for 10 minutes or so, giving a goal and a point. Remember the Ke Lee Keegan, or um, Higgins punted the ball out to Aidan O'Shea along the sideline. Yeah. It was then the bad kick out. There's a goal and a point there in a couple of minutes against Kerry. You, yeah. They cannot do that in a final against oh, Dublin. No, no, no. They'll be steamrolled. So if they, that little self destruct button doesn't, you've got to wipe that out. Got to wipe that out completely. Desi, would you be worried about McCaffrey bombing on, McCarthy, Fenton? That, I think that's the point Paul's making. All these <laughs> Do you think we already know what them boys are right now, in fairness? Yeah. Like, Jack McCaffrey thought the last day was incredible. The pace. John Small is a, quite a, he's come on a lot, I suppose, this year. Jack McCaff McCarthy, or James McCarthy, sorry, he's gone into midfield. So like he, he's probably holding a little bit more than he used to. I think he used to, but like, I think John said it right. 
Mayo are the best running team in the country. Like Curry were consumed with stopping uh, the Mayo half back line in that match. They literally, their tactics were just stop the runners from Mayo, and they, did, they didn't know how to play any other way. But um, look at Dublin. Dublin can do it anyway. That's the worry. Like, yeah, that's easy. And do you know if someone is going well, do you know Philly might go over for a few minutes, like, and like what Philly might be doing. God only knows, and that's the experience that the Dublin players have. Andy Moran as well. If you're looking at the forward line, the full forward line, Andy Moran is the main go-to guy. Michael Fitzsimons is very tight, tenacious. He's after putting probably a stone and a half on the last two years in terms of muscle. The worry is, will Andy get the space that he normally gets? And if he doesn't, what happens to the full forward line? Bill? I qu we'll take one more question here. It's from uh, Stephen Healy. You won't see him because he's so small. He's on the back here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thanks very much, Chief. Brother. Uh, Brother. This is a question for Bernard. It's not often that you get a chance to meet your heroes. Always admired Bernard's skill and his balance on the field of play. Was a great admirer of that oh, team in 88, 89 when they won the all -Ireland. I love Bernard's uh, informative analysis on the radio. I love listening to his uh, very controversial opinion. So I really have great time for Bernard here. And it's great to see him here live and unplugged in Charlestown. My question is for Bernard. I was absolutely engrossed in his commentary on the Mayo Kerry first match. Himself and Martin Marzi delivered a real tour of divorce. But I noticed in the dying seconds of the game, when this was Dublin were leading by a point, sorry, Kerry were leading by a point, and Paddy Durkin got the ball and kicked it over the bar, Bernard seemed to get a weak moment. He seemed to, uh, I was just wondering, Bernard. I heard a yeah, little bit of an that. expletive. You muttered a little bit of an expletive under your breath. Just wondering, did you have a stack load on Kerry to win? Certainly. No, no. Go back there. Certainly. <laughs> I won't find you because another fellow with no hair, he's bald as well. I certainly did not. And I, No, there was something put out that got my face serious at that moment. And If you listen to the commentary, I was anything but... And somebody, actually Parkinson tried to stitch me up at this thing that went viral. And I was with Marty, shocked like this, because they did it for Facebook and on RT, and it was nothing to do with that at all. And yeah, I don't put money on games that I'm commentating on. Just so, that you commentate on. <laughs> now, now there's your answer. No, I, I certainly, that was not the case at all, at all, at all. I was thrilled he scored, for Jesus' sake. You got another gig out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's nice. It, but but it's nice to. Thanks for the comments earlier on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That was it. That's it, Mike. So, Bill, what's the plan? I think we're going to take a break for a few minutes. We'll take a break for 25 minutes and have the big guys going around selling tickets for the raffle. Basically, it's one ticket for a fiver, three for 10 euro, chance to win all Ireland tickets, Man United tickets, and some Mayo merchandise. So a big round of applause again for Desi Dolan, Bernard Flynn, and John Casey. Welcome back. I see they're four deep at the bar. Don't let us uh, interrupt you. But uh, if you could make your way back to your seats as quick as you can. We're ready to throw in the ball for the start of the second half. And uh, we might get a few war stories in part two. We might just uh, lighten the mood a bit and break away from tactics and heavy analysis and Des Dolan's utility room and get down to the uh, the good old-fashioned to what really happened inside the dressing room stuff. Just to introduce you to our, our panel, our second panel, Aidan doesn't need much introduction to this part of the world, the Philly McMahon of Charlestown, Aidan Higgins. <laughs> Beside him, a man from just up the road, Sligo All-Star, friend of Mayo football, Eamon O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> not a bad reaction, Eamon. No, I'm happy with that. And on my right, the one and only Michael Mickey C. Conroy of Davids and Mayo fame. And of course, last but not least, the legend that is, we only need to call her by one name, Cora. Yeah. Cora, that, that must be nice because, I mean, it's Messi, it's Neymar. It's Dara, it's Pawdy, and it's Cora. I mean, 
what, what's it like? What's it like at the moment now, on the back of winning the semi-final last week and, and that player of the match performance, and the fact that you've been doing the business at such a high level for the last nearly 20 years? Do you get used to it, the, the, being, being straight up, the selfies, the autographs, the attention? Uh, yeah, I suppose you kind of get used to it, but um, these days now I'd probably try and stay, stay away from it. Like, I, I work in Casa Bear, obviously, so... You know, you wouldn't be going downtown for lunch or that, or you try and stay away from the shops and stuff. Um, you know, not that you don't want to be um, nice to people, you know, but you can kind of get too much of football talk and you're trying to maybe get yourself right, especially maybe in the lead up to the match. But um, no, generally, generally, I don't mind it, you know. Um, people, I'm so well known around the town now, or even at home, you know, people will just, you know, chat away to you. Um, obviously, yeah, kids and that it would, would, might get a bit excited, and sometimes. It's very nice to be the, maybe the older generation, people maybe in their, in their late 60s and 70s that have come up and talk to you. Um, but I think it's because it's a short name and a bit of an unusual name um, that the, you know people know you by Cora. Um, I, don't, I don't, don't definitely put myself up in the names of Messi or name or anyone like that. Mickey C, when it comes to being recognised <laughs> and having a fan base, I mean, there was a time, there was a time, believe it or not, when you mightn't be stopped in the middle of Ballandine. And now, after that spread in the examiner a few weeks ago, you were trending on Twitter. What, what a transformation. Yeah. Um, examiner, yeah, it was good. Yeah. That was great. Like, let's be honest. Yeah, it was, it was, you know, a lot of I got a great reaction from it, I suppose. Um, Kieran Shannon rang me up. He was the sports psych with, with Mayo for those couple of years. And... Uh, Rang me, said we're looking to do a piece. I said, oh yeah, do you need one of the lads' numbers or who do you want? Like, you know, um, he goes, no, no, we're going to do it on you. I said, what? You know, all right, like, you know. But I was looking at Stephen McDonalds and these All Ireland winners. I was going, what? Are you? Do what do you want me for? Do you know? And he goes, look, I think it's time. You know, you're you're stepped away. You're nearly 18 months away, and we'll we'll have a bit of crack. I said, well, if we're having a bit of crack, we'll have a bit of crack. You know. And ye had crack. We had great crack. Um, so he met me down in Tralee. I was working in Tralee the last couple of, couple of uh, months, and we were down the Brandon Hotel, and it was backing over, and he was tick to phone and stopping it and starting it, and I was going, geez, you better take this one offline for a second, you know. Um, but it was two hours long, and, and, and then he stopped about three o'clock, and he goes, uh, I've actually way too much here. And I was only getting going uh, <laughs> when, he, when he stopped. So <laughs> it came out, and... Um, I got a great text from oh, everywhere. It was different, you know. It wasn't, you know, the the, the bullshit. The lala boys are coming out with it. They're on their RT contracts or whatever they're doing, and they're putting up their stuff. And <laughs> am I making? You know, Eamon and the, all the boys that are gone. You know what I mean? They, they have to be. Yeah, I don't care. Like what I said, it didn't bother me one bit. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I just, we had a chat, we had a chat about old times and a couple of things and stories and I suppose he put it together and he wrote a good piece, yeah. This week, how badly do you miss it this week? You know, the calm before the storm, the balls in the camp coming up to a final. I mean, you, you were inside in 04, you were inside for 12 and, and 13. You know what it's like to be in a Mayo squad 06. coming up to an All-Ireland final. 06, yeah, as well. That's, twi I mean, that's twice tonight. Yeah, twice tonight. That's twice that, I've, yeah. knocked, I've knocked one of your inter-county <laughs> seasons off in, in one fell swoop. Yeah. But I mean, how, how bad do you miss it now at the minute? I don't miss it at all at, all at the minute because I just... Physically, I can't compete, you know what I mean? So it's no problem, you know, it's not an issue. Uh, if I could, I'd be absolutely very, very hurt and uh, really wondering what's going on and stuff like that. But the week before an All-Ireland final, well, I suppose when you win a semi-final, um, I remember in 2012, because I, I was lucky enough to be there in 04 and 06 in 2012, you had a couple of Evan Regans and a few of these boys down the back of the bus. And I was going, lads, you don't know what's coming next year now. You know, it's, it's suits and it's holidays and it's the whole lot. Without taking my mind off the game, like, but this is the night, night. Are you sure your mind wasn't off the game? Oh, it was completely <laughs> off the game, to be honest, it was. But this is in the bus, was after semi-final, we were going out, the crack was going to be good and you're in a great buzz and the three weeks leading up to the final is brilliant you know I suppose I was kind of the person where I'd love to go down to the shops and love to meet Joe Soap and have a chat to him and it didn't bother well I don't know whether it bothered me or not I still don't have an all Ireland senior medal so maybe it did bother me maybe I didn't do the wrong thing, right thing but I know the likes of Colin Boyle I was into him during the week and uh He's in a, living in an apartment in town. We lived together for, for, for four years and he'd be cooped up. There'd be no such thing as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any social media. He's keeping himself locked down. Uh, he'll go to work. The lads at work will know what the likes of Colin Boyle. They won't talk to him about it or whatever like that. And he's just in the apartment there and he'd be dissecting videotape on whoever he's picking up. Um, and just thinking about the match, um, as, as everybody else will be. They'll be delighted when training, training day comes because they get there or whatever 
Although like normally we'd say training is at half seven, eight o'clock, if they'd be there maybe six, they get the rub down and the crack is starting. You know, training starts inside the lines. They're going hell for for leather. Then afterwards, they get the, the you know the food and whatever like that. And the day is gone. So it's great. It's another day gone before the actual showpiece. You know, um, but this week now today today is Saturday night. They'll probably be training A versus B game tomorrow. Is the normal uh, run of the mill stuff. Uh, lads will be look you know really concentrating to 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 get in there for a lot of reasons because I suppose. You know the team will be picked tomorrow. Whether if it's not already, um, it'll be a case of you know a couple of lads that had kind of injuries coming into it. Have they fully recovered? Uh, and if they have, we'll have to see it tomorrow. If they don't, well then, to be honest, they won't be considered because they won't be considered for a starting lineup. Maybe for a sub the bench because you know if you haven't trained going into an All Ireland final flat out, it's very hard going to an All Ireland final and play. It's it's nearly impossible. You know, so you know maybe Johnny Vaughan. I know Jim O'Connor picked up a couple of knocks. Apparently they're fine. I hope they are. I think they are. So. They'd be looking to perform tomorrow and show, listen, we're ready to put up our hands, we're ready to get in. If you're not in that, then you want to get into 26, which is another um, day's work. You know, you're looking to impress. Will Stephen Watford change that up? I don't know. Um, he might look at different reasons or will he go and say, listen, we are going on form, so X is in and Y is out, you know. And then the lads that don't get in, which I've been on both ends, I've started, I've been in the 26 and I've been out on the 32. and. It's not the best place to be, but you know what I mean? We, everybody's in there, you know, all year, giving it, giving it their all. And, uh, you know, that, that's that's the way it is, I suppose. Eamon, I was at a, at a preview night in Westport last night. And we, we got chatting about the, the big game experience, like the, the, the big match day experience in Crow Park. And, like, take us, take us there. 80,000, big championship game, all on the line. Like, for you... Did you relish those days? Good question for me or is it for it? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> in fairness, I'm just going to spoil your joke. You, you've played in a few big ones as well. Like, let's be fair. Like, Sligo, Sligo were up there when, when there were games to be won. I mean, I can think of one off the top of my head. Peter Ford, a good ball and road man, brought you, brought you to, to, high, to high heights. Um, but what's it like? I mean, do, did you love it? Did you relish the big days? Did you, did you get a buzz out of it? Yeah. Um, I, I think... You know, coming from Sligo is always going to be very, very difficult. I think the mindset in Sligo is about sort of doing well and just being taken part. And when I sort of started with Sligo, it was about changing perception. And I know people here and people, you know, I'd be talking with Aidan and the guys and you get to know me all people, you know, genuinely would look down on you. And it was always about trying to change that perception, um, proving yourself that you're good enough. And when I started playing, I got I was lucky enough to join with the, the Compromise Rules team and, and I got to learn an offer from, you know, the, the Kerry players, the Dublin players, how they conducted themselves, the Armagh players and how they viewed how you train, how they viewed how the opposition is and how they viewed other individual teams. And the arrogance and the cockiness was, was just unbelievable. Now, Fordy came in, um, I couldn't speak highly of the man, you know, one of, one of the best people I've ever met. Um, people would ask, you know, what way would you describe him? Is he cocky? Is he this? Is that? You know, he. It, it's not. It wasn't an arrogance. It was just a, an unbelievable self belief. And Peter instilled that in our team. He just couldn't understand why we weren't, you know, thinking like Mayo or thinking like you know winners. And uh, you know, he just, you know, the way he we he approached it, we just fed off his energy, fed off the way he looked at it. I just loved that. I just really, really, you know, took that in, and I just wanted to challenge myself against the better players out there and see how good you are. And you know, it was those one to one battles you cherish and you know, we got a we were lucky to play the Tyrone team in O two. Um you know, funny enough, we bet them and bet them comprehensively, albeit the do they dominated us in the first twenty minutes. You know, we took ownership of the game and then a year later they're winning the All Ireland. A year later we're being hammered by Mayo. And that's that's the difference. That's where we went from uh, from different heights to all time lows, where Tyrone went a different direction and they went on to win obviously three. So you no, know, yeah, we 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 got very, very close and Yes, we had some big days, but that preparation is just—you just, I just used to love it. I used to cherish the games, like Mike, and you know, you'd, there's times when you'd have dickheads would be around the place and they'd be annoying your arse, would be smart ass comments when you'd be walking down the street or something. But there was genuine people that wanted to talk to you and shake your hand and have a bit of crack with you. I enjoyed that interaction because just people, people being people. I can remember years ago when I was very, very small. I was about 12 years of age, and I saw Lee McHale. Now, I used to look at Lee McHale. I used to pretend I was Lee McHale down my back lawn, down at Torres Strand, because um, I was just fascinated with the man, even with the basketball and with the football. And I can remember seeing him in my mum was from Mayo, so as much as you, 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 you kind of said a, a friend of Mayo, I am half Mayo, so I am, I'm on your side when it comes down to cheering for you and, and talking about you. But um, 
my mum, uh, but down in Mayo, I saw, I saw Liam, and I was just in awe of the man. And I let her shout, I let her shout from across the street, and I hid behind a van. I can remember doing it because I was embarrassed by what I did, but I felt I needed to do it. I don't know why I did it, but that's how the, the self esteem I looked at, and that's how I, I viewed those Mayo people. So I think for me, it was just about trying to be the very, very best. I got lucky enough to play against Aiden, or against uh, Liam and, and the Mayo lads, and. Uh, and he just wanted to pitch himself as being against the very, very best. I hear that dog barking again. Is, is Bernard making a run for it, or what's the story? Is Bernard think, playing? Uh, yes. It's James Horn coming in for him, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aidan, you were in the 06 team that played in All-Ireland, and I'm just thinking of all the different angles that people are talking about ahead of the game on, on Sunday week. And, you know, the first 20 minutes and the first 25 minutes, that seems to be a big focus that you know that's what Mayo have to get through and still still be in there because Dublin are going to come out of the blocks flying what, what are the first 25 minutes of a big game in Crow Park like you know with a full house with a Dublin or a Kerry or one of these big juggernauts coming at you can, can you remember back and, and again give us a sense of what that's like well, probably uh, personally for myself, it was uh, I wouldn't have been used to playing big games up in Crow Park or whatever. This team now has been so used to it, so it's not, it's not really going to affect them. But um, from my own perspective, I know it was uh, it was very daunting. You know, you have a lot of the older players trying to help you out at different stages. About you know, not going out when you uh, maybe second or third when you're running out because the crowd starts to clap and next all of a sudden you just hear this this wave of, of clapping and people shouting and especially when you're playing the likes of Dublin because it's a little bit of a circus when you're playing Dublin because the Dublin fans are you know they, just like Mio fans they're very enthusiastic or whatever and in 2006 I suppose in, in the semi-final we, that, that day I think it was 82,000 people 82,500 people that was in Croker that day we went out and unfortunately or unfortunately we went down to the wrong side and uh, <laughs> tell us how exactly did that happen again? Uh, Brady was involved anyway, I think. And Brady and I think Mickey Conroy might have. <laughs> yeah, it was me. It was me. <laughs> you, you made the call, Mickey. Yeah, yeah? I made the call. I made the call. I felt it was the right thing to do. I made the call. You know, was, was it Mickey Moore or Mickey Conroy? Yeah, no, it wasn't me. It was, uh, <laughs> it was David, I think it was, it, it, it was David Heaney. I think it was David Heaney. Yeah, we we, we just got up from the the, the bench after getting the force graph and we were. Just headed down. I didn't even know where I was going. I just went with the lads. So next door, we're down there, and then we're like, oh, Jesus. So the crowd, of course, the Dublin supporters then at that stage were going absolutely mental. And I remember at one stage, I was, uh, I was just standing at the goals, and we're doing a kind of a warm-up drill or whatever, and I said, I said to Heaney, I said, Jesus, Sarah, they're throwing bottles of Sidona at us. <laughs> and uh, Heaney said, that's not Sidona. <laughs> so on. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, a good She's time. Had you been in Dublin at all, though, that's it. <laughs> I learned a lot that day. Yeah, but just, uh, just on, in that, uh, that first t t 10 or 15 minutes in that warm-up or whatever, it was, the experience was unreal. And I remember at one stage, our, our, our uh, nutritionist, she, she was going around to her, giving bottles of water or whatever to the players, and the Dublin players happened to be the first that they'd done this, ma this famous walk down towards the hill. And um, then they started doing their warm up in the middle of us all or whatever. And uh, one of the Dublin players, and I think he was actually kicking the ball at John Morrison, but he, he, he hit the, uh, the nutritionist, hit her in the side of the face, yeah. knocked her out. And then, of course, they, I think the shoulder, the, um, the Ray Caffery yeah. and uh, John Morrison's shoulder came out of that then after that, you know. Was it good fun at the time, or were you were you brick it? I enjoyed it. I thought it was great, crack. <laughs> you know, so I was, it, it took our focus off the game a little bit, you know. And uh, once the game starts, then we, we didn't start off particularly well, but our nerves and that was just gone out the window because none of us warmed up on the far side of the field. We were all warming up, and just the game started then. And I don't think. I don't. I remember. I was. I wasn't even playing. I was, I was chomping to get in there. Yeah. I was just. I think everybody was just loving it. it was for a spectacle. It was absolutely brilliant, and it was a great psychological, psychological play. Yeah. Whoever did it, I could see Mickey Moore. Funny enough, I just watched it there during the week. It was on. You could see Mickey Moore trying to be. Yeah, typical yeah. Mickey be the nice Mickey. You know, come on, me all lads. Let's put up the white flag and go back up to the canal end. And in fairness to the boys, they, they held rank, but it was absolutely, it was, yeah. a, it was a, an absolute I, It, it was, a, at that stage, David Heaney and David Brady, because we were all kind of pulled in, and they, Mickey, Mickey Moran did genuinely want us to go back down to the other side of the field, and that would have been admitting defeat straight away. Yeah. We would have definitely lost that game. What did Brady say to him? I mean, you, we can all lip read, have a fair idea, but you were, <laughs> yeah. you were on the scene, Aidan. As the man says. There's no fucking... <laughs> I think he said, as the man says, did he? Yeah. 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 He wasn't for turning. No. 
No, and luckily enough, it worked out well. It probably wouldn't, if we had lost that game, it wouldn't have, it would have been a stupid move. Yeah, a bit of a crazy move, but in hindsight, it was a great move. Cora, we were chatting about that in the, in, in the first part as well. I mean, Bernard was just making the point that Mayo have to bring something different and, you know, bring an edge and, and, and catch, knock the dubs out of their comfort zone. Where do you stand on all of that in a big game? I mean, do things like Mayo going to the hill that day, you know, starting a bit of a bit of aggro before the ball is thrown in? I mean, I've, I've been watching ladies' football pretty closely lately, and it's not getting any less physical. There's not any less argy bargy. So, is that an issue in your game as well? I mean, you're playing Dublin in the final in a couple of weeks' time. Will you be looking for the edge? Of course, yeah. Um, no, no matter what what team you're playing or what you know, ladies' football or men's football, of course you're looking for the edge. Um, yeah, and, and I think Bernard's dead right. I think Mayo have to come with something different. Um, but as you said to him, it's all about controlling it and know, knowing what to do. Um, but I do think that this Mayo team have had the edge all year. I think they've had the, the edge the past few years, and I, I think we just maybe it didn't have a bit of luck. Um, but I do think, think there's something different about them. Um, I think they're very one-minded this year. Um, I think they've just real soul focus. Um, and they all seem to have the... The Cullen Boyle aggression, if you want to call it, um, that Cullen Boyle kind of uh, fieriness that's there. Um, I, you've seen it in a lot more of the players. Obviously, we have that the wonderful half back, back line there, and you see it in the likes of Keith Higgins, Lee Keegan, and all that. But you're seeing the fire in, 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 in quite a lot of the, we'd say, the quieter players on their team are the players that wouldn't be as um, highly well known. And we talked about Jason Darnley. You can see the fire. There's a couple of matches this year against Kerry, and any time you know players come at them or you know they're being pushed and shoved, they're standing up to it. Yeah, and in any match you need the edge. And I think Mayo, I really do think that this year they do have that something different. And it's very hard to put your finger on what's different. But I do think that you know they know it as a team themselves that they're probably, you know, been around a while and haven't achieved or got that medal that they want. And I think that now they're saying, you know, in one way, you know, they're throwing their whole lot in and saying, you know, why not? Why can't we do it this year? And I don't think they fear the jobs. I think, you know, the jobs have been very much untested. I think, you know, what wasn't really discussed in the first panel, but, you know, the full back line there and the Dublin team haven't been tested at all. And I, and I do think it's an area that Mayo, Mayo can really go at them. We do talk about Aidan O'Shea and where he can play. And I do disagree with Bernard. I, I think, yeah, he can have a, a, an influence around the middle for some parts of the game. But I do think at some stage in, in the day, we're going to have to see Aidan O'Shea in full forward line. Um, because I do think it's a, it's a weakness. And we've seen it when, when Dublin, Colum Cavanagh went in for the last couple of minutes, albeit the game was over. He tested that full back line. Um, and I think last year, while it mightn't have worked, um, we didn't have this. We didn't have the Andy Moran around there. Um, you know, Andy's a little sniper. He'll go around and he'll get every ball. He can read the game so well. Keep Killian closer and to, closer to goal. I do think it's a tactic that at some stage the next day Mayo will have to use it because I do think while well, Andy has been playing extremely well, to be playing to be a form forward day in day out and for your game to go well, it's very difficult. So we're going to need something different. And I do think that Aiden. In, in at the edge of the square, albeit not for the whole game, will be something that Stephen Rochford um, will will um, do um, on Sunday week. In, in terms of playing the dubs, Mickey, you, you've gone in against them in championship a few times. Is it different? And what's different about it? Obviously, you've got the hill factor, but they just seem to have a swagger, a confidence, that innate belief in themselves, don't they? And yet, oh, you yeah. were there when you got a result. I was, yeah. Um, yeah, they, they do. They're very comfortable up there, you know. Um, they do a lot of their training in Abbottstown at, at the minute, which is dimensionally the exact same as Scroll Park. Uh, but they're very comfortable up there to play all the league games. This winter series that they brought in a couple of years back has definitely benefited them. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I know Mayo had a shaky start maybe to the year this year, but when they got into Crow Park, Roscommon, okay, maybe well, the first game wasn't great, but after that, they've bombed, you know. Um, and it's because of Crow Park, you know, it, it does bring bring it out in you. And the dubs do bring something different. The hill is definitely, there is noise, serious noise coming from it. Um, but it's how you take it, you know what I mean? You can you can say, listen, I'm not ready for this, or you, you can engage it, you know. I, I was laughing, you know, you were saying about 2006, and... Uh, it was a great day in the whole lot. It wasn't for me. I, I you know, uh, the, the 
the turmoil at the start or whatever like that and, and, and the unrest and it definitely 100% got me out I actually started that day corner forward and it but did affect you yeah? oh completely for me yeah Conor, Conor Mortimer and Kieran McDonald wasn't a bad full forward like the other two boys anyway um, <laughs> two over three yeah, yeah well at least they were helping me out just team game Mike um, <laughs> you were making the runs <laughs> yeah yeah, I team. was making the run. They're making the space for the march, you know. He'd want that get out the way there, you know. What I mean, team, team game, pass me the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the ball at prime time, you know what I mean. So prime time was shooting. He was getting, but he was playing well. He was playing great stuff. But uh, definitely overawed me. I was 21, maybe. And uh, after on the back of an hour and 21, definitely caught me out. And I was, I was on the bench at about 31 minutes in. And uh, that's the way it is, isn't it? Um, but at least, at least Chucky O'Neill didn't get a point with his first touch. Anyway. Yeah, Chucky O'Neill comes in, scores a bomb. I says, oh. I'll the final, forget about it. <laughs> you know, if we get there, but look, what we got there, it's, uh, it, it was brilliant and uh, it didn't work out for us against Kerry. But yeah, the dubs bring bring that that X factor. They um, they're very comfortable up there. It, it, it's easy for them. They sleep in their bed the night before, which is a huge huge plus for anybody. You know what I mean? You can say it's not, and it it is. It's 100. If you're sleeping in your bed the night before, you know you get up in the morning, even you're having your own breakfast. I know they meet in the Gibson Hotel around 11 o'clock. I've actually stayed the night before where I've seen them on the way in, and. Um, you know they're, they're very comfortable in their process and Jim Gavin goes on about the process he never he doesn't talk about anything else so he goes on about that <laughs> so he goes on but he probably has a philosophy as they boom bang you know what I mean they're sick and this happens this happens this happens and then they perform and nine times out of ten they do Eamon Cora's talking about you know bringing something to knock them out of their stride and, and you know that's going to be crucial but like you you played the game let's be honest you played the game on the edge like in the big championship games you you went where you had to go to get it done if you were going out against Dublin and you were wearing a Mayo jersey on, on Sunday week what, what would your mindset be look let's be honest you'll have read the papers you'll, you'll, you'll have you'll have heard what's been said about them they're the, they're the best of the best they're going for three in a row so what, what are you going to bring what should what are Mayo going to bring what do they need to bring in terms of the mindset, um, I know Bernard talk about the the aggression and bring something to your game. That doesn't suit a lot of people. You know, you can you can plan around that. Either you you got to have that or you don't. Uh, this man here beside me had a little bit of that. He didn't ask him about him. That he could deal he deal with any trouble. But if if you asked any of the other guys, like if you asked fellas that wouldn't be well, we more about football. Like Mikey, there, I don't think. He wouldn't throw a dirty stroke at anybody. He, he seems to be nice. And he's from Davos. And he's from Davos. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the let's play with him. Yeah, yeah, he's a soft tire. Nice lads. Yeah. Nice lads. Um, but I'm just saying, it's... it's so, so. I think what I think what Mayo yeah, I think what Mayo have done so far is really really good. They have to play their own strengths. They have to be able to look at it. They have to get another 9 out of 10 out of Andy Moore. Now, if I was a Dublin selector or manager... I would go straight to I would go straight to uh, taking Andy Moore out of the game because I think then it sort of has to put pressure on the other Mayo forwards that are actually out there. So Andy Moore needs to probably expect you know a tired time for whoever's going to pick him up. Um, whether Mayo will do something different. The only thing I would worry about with the Mayo management, and I know the guys talked about the crazy decisions of last year and all that type of thing. I think. They've played this is their tank game. They've played week on week on week a lot of the time, and they hadn't had time to think of massive game plans. They made a tweak here and there. Yes, they did the Aidan O'Shea move, um, but I think this three weeks, some 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 teams have people that come in with fucking stupid ideas and try and force change and try and reinvent the wheel. I just think, and I hope that Mayo don't come in with something crazy on on, on the next day that. They stick to their game plan, stick to what has worked. The good thing about Mayo and Cora touching it there, there's about 10 guys playing exceptionally well. And that's four more than was playing, they were playing well last year. And Mayo nearly won the game. So it's important that those 10 guys are playing really well. I think if we get a little bit more out of Killian O'Connor, if we get an awful bit more out of Doc O'Connor, all of a sudden you've got 12 fellas. And I think that 12 fellas can win you in All-Ireland. But that's that's the hard question. That's about Andy getting having a repeat performance. Aidan O'Shea, yes, he sacrificed his game. Well, he sacrificed his general play for the team if he's playing, which I think he should play. But it's about getting the ball and offloading. If Aidan starts taking it into tackles, 
they are Dublin are going to love that. They're going to love that. They're going to suck that up. So it's about just sticking to what they've done well and just improving on it. I know that sounds cliched, but that's exactly the thing they need to do. You mentioned Andy there a couple of times. You were you were working with him in Balahadreen for a season. Like just just give us a flavour of of what lengths Andy is going to to get the most out of himself. I mean, he's he's hitting towards thirty four. He's favourite to win Footballer of the Year. And if half we're hearing is true, the guy is literally eating, sleeping and drinking it. Like he's doing whatever it takes to squeeze every last drop. You've seen that up close. Yeah, and I think there's a maturity about him. Obviously, when you get older, you get a little bit smarter. Uh, You get a lot smarter. You you know, you listen to your body an awful lot more. He'll do a lot of the training. Obviously, the preseason's gone very, very well with him. He has no injuries. He's the type of guy that's very, very driven. He knows what he wants, and that's an All-Ireland medal. And then when you have a... When that's a, a tangible, like it's, it's, it's different for me saying I, I want to win an All-Ireland medal. Coming from Sligo, it's, it's, an opera, it's an unrealistic attitude to have. Where Andy is coming with us, they really have a chance of winning one. And it becomes easy, and the focus is very, very much about that. Yes, he is eating and drinking uh, Mayo football right now. He's managing, I think, look, he's in a position that he's, he's working in Castlebury, he has his own business, he can pick and choose his hours. Um, but he's a very, very open and outgoing person, so a lot of people want to be pulling for him. He, he, he tends to entertain a lot of people, which is good, but he likes that as well. So I just think Andy, as obviously, it's about being obviously fresh for the day. Um, you mentioned there that he is in line for, for Player of the Year. Down through the years, you could have named potential uh, players of the year is going into All-Ireland Finals and the losers on the performance of the final. And that's what I would worry for Andy's sake. That he is going to be a man, mar- uh, a marked man. And I think for his sake, I, I really do hope for his sake that he does really, really well. But I just think for me own sake, he, does, he, he, needs to put in a, he needs to score a 1-3 or a 1-1 a one, one or a 1-2 or something like that just to conquer that, that. But I think ultimately it's, it's a cross that he's looking for. Speaking of marked men, yeah, round of applause for Andy. Speaking of Mark Mendo, I was chatting to Gary Ruan last night for a while. He'd be cut from the same cloth as yourself, Aidan, I'd say. Let's, let's be honest, uh, a tight Mark and cornerback. How badly would you love to get a run at your Paddy Andrews or your Dean Rock or your Paul Mannion, you know, the, these inside forwards? Like, it, 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 would be, it must be some challenge coming down the track for, you know, Harrison, Higgins, whoever else plays back there in the full back line. Like, these guys are the creme de la creme now at the moment. Yeah, I suppose, uh, oh, obviously, I'd love to have a rattle at them, but um, <laughs> I, I think... Any one of them in particular, in? Can I ask you a question? Where's John Casey? John, why did you not let Aidan Higgins take on Sean Davey and that row you had? That box of <laughs> Just uh, answer me that question. He's been lining that up all night. <laughs> I have a right to reply when I get a mic. <laughs> right. We'll sorry, be back sorry. to you, JC. No. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Training ground move, lads. What was the question, Eamon? Uh, why did you not let Eden Higgins into the ring? Okay. For more than the 23 seconds you did. <laughs> Very good. I guess Sean David. Just a, just a simple... Very, it's a good question. Thanks. What's that dripping down? Is that fake tan dripping down the side of your face <laughs> there, or what's going on? <laughs> No, it's coming off my hair. Could be a long night, lads. <laughs> Could be a long night. Aiden, I want to ask you, which one of them do you, would you most rather a crack at, though? There must be one of them now. You're watching them at home on the, on the big wide screen and you're thinking, oh, I'd love a crack at him. What, the both of them? Yeah. No, no. No, as in the Dublin players? Yeah, oh, any no. of the I'd Dublin love, forwards no, no, in I'd particular. Like to, I'd love to have a rat like Kieran Kilkenny because I think he is Dublin's main man. And to, when... It's never really happened this year because Dublin haven't been put any, uh, under any real pressure. But I think when they do be put under some little bit of a pressure, he seems to come into the game. And he's their link man between their defence and their forward line. And I think he's a big part of Dublin playing well. Now, they haven't been tested this year. So obviously he hasn't been seen in his, game, in, in his role. But I think he's a big part of Dublin's game. But... I just just on reflecting on what Bobby Cora said and uh, the, the panel before that or whatever, the, the, the run about us about me all changing something. Why do we need to change something? You know, we've got here playing our game the way we play it. I know we we talk about where we're going to position Aiden. That's only a bit part in the our best. The, the, the way we play is we run hard, and I think what we need to do is run hard for 55 minutes, run hard at Dublin, then. 
when Dublin start offloading their bench, we need to have certainly pin man picked the guys to go on the field to mark the guys that goes on for Dublin. And I can guarantee you, if we're two, three points up at that stage, and we start off putting Paddy Durkin onto the field last year, Stephen Cohen to mark the likes of Kevin McMinimum, Jim Rich Connolly, and these guys, I can guarantee you, it'll upset Dublin. Because they know Mayo is going to come at them hard. And I think Paul O'Connell says it best. He says, manic aggression. That's what Mayo need. Mm. They need manic aggression. And it's, it's been there th th this year when we, when we played really, really aggressive and really hard and ran at teams really hard. We've been, we, 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 we've been hard stopped, you know. So why change anything, you know? Corey Aiden is talking about getting, getting in their face, shutting them down. <laughs> manic aggression. You, you've been on the receiving end of quite a bit of that over the years and, and it doesn't look like it's going to finish up anytime soon. How, how, big of a, how big of an issue is that for a player? You know, a marquee forward like yourself or, or a, a Killian or an Andy or, or the Dublin guys where all of a sudden you've got less time, you've got less space, there's somebody hanging out of you, maybe somebody in your ear as well. I mean, uh, you, I'm guessing you've got to be really mentally tough to deal with that and to still deliver a performance. Yeah, I suppose... I, I, over time, I think as as you get older, you mature and, and learn to deal with it. Um, but the more the more pressure the, um, the more pressure I have, or the more people that's in my ear, the better I, um, the normally the better I react. Um, because you know you normally have crowds in your back and that, and you know you kick a wide and and it's a louder cheer than it is if you put the ball over the bar. Um, so I love that. You know I love that you kind of thrive on that and you're kind of saying in your own head you're going to say well I'll just give the two fingers back to these now. Um, so it's that type of thing. It's that type of thing that you love. Yeah, you know at my age now I love to st still see two people coming to mark me um, and say do you know what this is great. Um, obviously they're still worried about you at your age they're going to still put two people mark. Me. So it's that you love that. You know. Andy will thrive on that or Killian inside will thrive on that but it's, it's, it's not to let them get you worked up to a point I can imagine if you feel someone like Philly McMahon in your ear all the time and there's you know there are comments being thrown at you all the time it's not to let you work, get worked up too much about it you're concentrating on your own game and the best way to do it is, is turn around put the ball over the bar and maybe have a comment back to Philly then and it, it'll soon stop um, but I just think w w w in relation to points there and, and Aidan has, has said it I think with Mayo what yeah, they have to bring that manic aggression and I think they have been bringing it all year but it's important that when, when they do bring it that, that they bring it in the right times of the game where I'd worry um, for Mayo um, looking at the last couple of the matches that they played especially in the last two matches I think we have the Stephen Cones and we have yeah. the Patrick Durkins and, and players to come off but I think there's certain players and players on the Mayo team that we can't afford to take off and maybe are struggling in the last five or six minutes. Not that they're struggling, they're just out of puff. They're just absolutely wrecked. And I've looked at it in the last couple of games. We had the like, likes of Keith Higgins, especially in the first Kerry game. Then maybe at about five or six minutes to go, had put in a massive shift. And in my eyes, as player of the match that day was unbelievable. But he was out on his feet. Crow Park is, is a really energy sapping pitch. You're up and down, you're up and down the pitch. And that's where I worry that if someone like Keith Higgins is out of puff with about five minutes, to go and the spring of Kevin McMinimum he'll probably be on earlier but if the spring is someone like a Bernard Brogan who do we have there okay to put in corner back to put in to mark a marquee forward like that that's where I'd probably worry um, from Mayo and obviously we've talked about benches it's the guys that we probably need on the pitch for the 74 75 minutes that we can't afford to take off because we probably don't. We have the likes of the Conor Loftus to come on or the Stephen Cohns or the Patrick Durkins, but there's certain lines in the pitch that we mightn't have. I think the full back line is one that we can't afford to take too many off. Or if we got a black card in an area like that, we could be in trouble. Mickey, in terms of all the lines that have been thrown at you over the years, Clover County, what's the best one you've heard? And you've genuinely thought to yourself, <laughs> that wasn't bad. All the way. I'm guessing you did most of the talking. Uh, but all, all the lies, all the lines. Like you've got, you've got a corner back or a, or a, or a oh, yeah. who trots into you and just delivers a kill yeah, line yeah, and absolutely one, yeah. throws you for. I'm great. Man, yeah, the, Neil McGee, Neil McGee in 2012, and look, he, he's a header. Like you know, in fairness, <laughs> <laughs> but he's very Takes good. Football, yeah, very good. Yeah, he's a very good footballer. But I, I was marking him, and um, as I was talking about Kieran Chen earlier on, they did the article in um, on the. Uh, in, in the examiner, you know, so uh, Neil comes in. I'd met him before in college because he was in, he was in, he was in Sligo, and I'd have been down there just, you know, sample the atmosphere, see what Sligo was like, you know. 
it's meant to be it's meant to be good it's meant to be I, I obviously wasn't inside I was in Galway but I went down on a night out just <laughs> to meet friends and be nice you know like that sociable so that was grand so I met him a few times before so in you know all our final is gone and I, I started off very well in the 12 final in my opinion now maybe not the people <laughs> up there but <laughs> you know in my head like uh, so that was grand anyway and uh, he was doing a bit of shouting and, and he was giving it to me or whatever and then he was shouting over Killian because he was like well I wasn't I was going fairly well so he's he trying to get somebody else out and he was shouting out but me Eamon was marking Killian and we were side by side or whatever like that and he goes yeah what did Karen Shannon tell you? What did Karen Shannon tell you to do now, you know? And uh, it was funny, like, at the time, you know, whatever. And I just turned around to say, Eamon, uh, uh, actually, uh, Jim McGuinness is looking over there at you. I think you could be going now soon, you know what I mean? I think, I think you could be on the pine soon. Never mind about Kieran Shannon or anybody else, because you're, you're actually on the way out here, you know? But he was he was, he was a great footballer. He won his honour in the middle. He's a couple of all-stars, and uh, he likes legend. Cora, Cora was saying that it, it, it brings out the best in her. Like, how did you react to it, though? Because I'm guessing it is going to be flying, isn't it, on Sunday week? I mean, we don't get to hear about it or hear it, but at that level, oh, yeah. two teams that don't particularly like each other, I'm guessing it's hot and heavy. Yeah, hot and heavy. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's what you make it. You know, if, 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 you want to, if you want to let it sink in, it'll affect you. If you don't, it definitely won't. Um, if they're saying it, then if a Dublin cornerback is telling you whatever he has to say to you, he's either worried about you, if you think, well, he's worried about me. If he's saying that to me now, he can't mark me, you know what I mean? So he's worried about me, he's trying to put me off my game another way rather than win the ball. But the main thing is, if you can win the first ball out in front of him, he's in so much trouble because then you turn around and say 1-0 now it's 1-0 do you know uh, if you go 2-0 up on him he's in big trouble do you know he, he can talk all he wants but he's 2-0 down and if you get a score or two like Andy Moore got man the match against Kerry um, his first score was a, was a goal now you can imagine if you get a, your first goal is a goal you are absolutely buzzing like you know and, and that's why his, his second score is a point he wins a free he's absolutely flying and it just feeds and feeds and feeds and escalates to I'm unstoppable and on the day he was you know so that, that's, that's what happens it, it depends how it works I suppose if he can if he can win the first couple of balls or two and get one or two nil up as I said as, regard, or as balls coming in for you win it rather than him win it but it can go the other way too you know whereas he gets out and he gets a hand in or he comes out and up the field or gets a score against you and then you're you are in the back foot and then it can affect you you know Eamon, in fairness to you, since the very start of the summer, you've been you've been sweet on Mayo, and even when they lost to Galway, you still felt that this team has got a kick in them. But in your heart of hearts, when you see Dublin coming down the track right now, have you ever seen anything quite like this Dublin team, or do you think the results this summer have maybe distorted our, our impression of them? Like, wh where where are they really at, in your opinion, the, the Dubs? Um, they are exceptional. Like, the results speak for themselves, and the, the, the All Ireland speaks for themselves. They're a special team. Um, a lot of a lot of talk has been about the financial back end, but. You know they've worked to get into this place. They've, you know, we, you listen to Mike, you listen to Dan, you listen to Cora. These people are thriving to get to All Ireland's and, and trying to win one. Dublin have achieved that, and they've and they've got numbers of All Ireland's. Um, they went through a very very barren time. I think it was between 95, 96, or from ninety six to eleven, and Dublin could Dublin could barely win a football match. This group of people have come together now and. You know, Jim Gavin has probably been very, very lucky, particularly when in the last, well, even last year's All Ireland to win one, they've had an element of luck about it. You know, hands down, Mayo should have won last year's All Ireland. There's, no matter what anyone says now, there's a lot of media driven bullshit. Dublin seem to have that on board. And I know last year they came with the plan with, with Lee Keegan and, you know, the off the ball stuff and all that type of stuff. To answer your question, they're exceptional bunch of players. Um, we, we, as you know, you find yourself supporting Mayo. You know, as a player, I hate Mayo, but now I'm finding myself. I'm a supporter, um, even against against goal or against Kerry when when Andy got that second goal. Jesus, I found myself jumping up and among all these sports, just so, and I had to get a grip of myself just for a second. But <laughs> no, it wasn't a bad way. But I just sort of just, but anyway, um, they they. They're, 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 their want to win to win an All-Ireland is unbelievable and the resilience that they're showing because they're being scarred and scarred and scarred year in, year out but Dublin's resilience to keep coming back and winning and winning and winning they have to admire that as well 
But that takes a lot of work too and the pressures come with that and they seem to be able to deal with that level of pressure and that's the most impressive thing about Dublin that these guys in Dublin, the media, the drive, the whole thing, the, the whole sort of package behind them, it's, it's massive. It's absolutely massive. And you have a commercial manager, I don't think in any other county there's a commercial manager there, you know, making deals, everybody having cars, everybody being well looked after with their dinners and their foods with their clothes like people don't realise what Dublin are actually getting and being handed to them free of charge what they're delivering at the same time at the end of it I forgot the question that you've asked me no in fairness you, you've answered it and I'm going to shoot around in a second and get, get your verdicts but before I do I asked John the same question earlier Ian you've played with, with Tom that little bit longer and you've shared a dressing room with Tom Parsons that little bit longer than John has but what, what does it mean to Charlestown to have one of your own Playing, playing with Mayo in an All Ireland final, and how good has he been this year? I um, well, uh, John is definitely right what he said. When there's uh, when there's nobody involved from a club in the county s- setup, and you're in an All Ireland, it, it, you're definitely missing something. Um, the buzz around the town at the moment is 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 just unreal, um, and it's it's great. Um, Tom lives beside me down in Belay. And uh, our kids abs- in Sligo, is it? Sligo, yeah. We won't go there now. <laughs> I don't even set that one up. I tell you what, I was talking. I was talking to Tom's dad there just in the break, and he says, he told me a lovely story. He said when Tom was under sixteen, he brought him down to uh, to Tubber Curry to try and get him to play in the development squad with Sligo. So he did everything about it. But in fairness, somebody gave him really, really good advice. He says, Tom, will you leave him alone and leave him in Charlestown because he's a better chance there? And sure enough, that's exactly what the case was. <laughs> In fairness, in fairness to Tom, though, he's um, from a, uh, from his perspective, he's an absolute brilliant guy in the dressing room. I don't think there's a guy that works as hard to get where he has. I, I, I could tell you numerous stories about his work preparation away. and his work ethic, and going back as far as last Christmas, like when he'd be down at our house, or whatever, and the kids would be having the kid, the Kimberly chocolate. What Macado or whatever, and Tom would not take one of them because just his mindset is, I'm not just I'm not just going to have one because if I have one, I'm letting someone down, and that's the that's his mindset just in in in, in, in December. So you can imagine what his mindset is now. He he will do everything, and I know this current squad will do everything in their power to win the All Ireland, and I do feel that. Um, that if they, if they do the things right the next day, as in as in aggression, score taking, decision making, and uh, there's there's a number of other things that, that that revolve around like the likes of who picks up who, you know. I I I, I think we're going to beat Dublin, you know. But on, on the, on the, the the flip side of that is this Dublin team is an unreal team and everybody I think everybody realises that like there's nobody denying that if Dublin happened to beat Mio the next day they, they, they will go down as one of the best Dublin teams or one of the best teams in history but on the flip side of that if Mio or when Mio win the next day they're going to go down as legends because you know and that's them guys see that that's what strives them every year Mickey, I, I know we spoke before last year's final, and, and I mean you were very confident about Mayo's chances. But there was one thing you said that, that that stuck in my mind, and you just made the point that these guys are on the road together now for six or seven years, and it's gone beyond being friends, and it's gone beyond trying to to win in All Ireland. I mean, th- there's a bond there now among this group, and I know your bond to them is still very strong, even though you're outside the setup. Just just give me a sense of that because. I think we all now appreciate at this stage, these are not like any other bunch of Mayo footballers we've ever seen before. Four All-Irelands finals, six years, whether or not that Celtic cross lands, we're not going to see a bunch of guys like this ever again. I hope we are, but um, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe when your young lad comes up through the ranks. Yeah, jeez. Oh, <laughs> but the, that that bond, that sense of the band of brothers, just just give me a, give me a flavour of that. Yeah, yeah, it is huge. You know, they are. Um, I suppose, look, it, it it doesn't come overnight. It, it, it's built up over time. I suppose James Horn came in in 2011, got them to a semi final, and from there to now they haven't missed one, uh, which is seven years, which is a long time to be in consistently semi finals, but. 
when you're on the road like that, you're you are on the road. You go to league games together. It's it's a bit of crack in the back of the bus, but it's four, three, four, five times a week, building up team morale and building up fun and you know crack. There is great crack. The WhatsApp group and the the slagging that goes on. It's 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 electric. You won't get it anywhere else. You know you won't get it in your in your work life. Definitely not. Um, you might get it in your personal life, but not to the same extent because this is like. You know, when, when you're in the Mayo panel, okay, you're working away. But when you're in the Mayo panel, it's like there's something special going on, especially when there was with Mayo. There's something special happening here because we knew we were building towards something. Um, hopefully, we were trying to get it to September and be the All Ireland final. You know, it was it was different, um, and it's been like that since since eleven, twelve final, thirteen final, fourteen is the famous Limerick game. 15 was the replay Dubs beat us going to win the All-Ireland 16 final 17 final so when you're going that far and you're going to the well there, you, you get a bond together as, and, and lads will do anything for anybody you know and there's a lot of stuff going on inside the group and when you go into Mikhail Park and train the door's locked so it's like listen whatever's happening here it's happening here nobody else knows us what's going on we don't know who's going well like we could, you could turn around Sunday and some major player mightn't be playing because nobody knows has he got injured did he pull a hamstring tomorrow morning in an A versus B game you won't know you won't, it won't leak you know uh, what, before you could, always, you could nearly find out what they were at, whatever you wanted but not anymore I think they've they've held their council together very very well you know and even what's happened them changing managers and whatever happened along that that's kind of put a bit of steel into them that you know kind of says listen we're going to get to our end goal and um, for me personally the, the end goal is going to happen Sunday week 100% yeah, you think they're going to win? Yeah, completely. You believe they're going to win? Oh, 100%, yeah. Um, I, I could say I have to. I could say I have to, but I actually genuinely believe they will. Um, you know, they've talked about, I know there's, there's questions, what, what players will get into the Dublin team. For me, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter because these are our lads, you know what I mean? And the Dubs have their, their uh, Jerry Juggernaut going and they are a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant team. Um, they have great players. Oh, they're all stars, etc., etc. They have a huge resource and the whole lot. But Mayo have been equally as good. Uh, last year we got them to a, to a replay with two two goals. You know, let's be realistic. They weren't um, you know goals that you get in order two own goals. It doesn't really happen. Lee Keegan sent off in in, a, in the in the in the replay over a black card who's after getting a goal. You know, he's he's flying takes Jim McConley out of it. So we had have had a lot of knocks in 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 the final. So. Do we need a bit of luck? Yeah, probably need a bit of luck. Will we need everybody to play well? Yeah, we will. Yeah, will we need Dublin to come off, have an off day? I don't think so because I don't genuinely believe they played Anthony Major. You know, they play what well, they saunter through Leinster like they do. They've played Tyrone. How good are Tyrone? They've won a back to back Ulster title. How good is Ulster football? Probably not great, to be honest. Um, who's the second best team in Ulster? Is it Donegal? They've lost their manager. Monaghan, is it Monaghan? They, can they win a Ireland? No, they can't, you know. So how good are actually Tyrone? Probably not great um, if, you, if you go through it, you know. Um, then on the flip side, how good are Kerry? Do you know, Kerry had, got their Ireland in, in 2015, but Mayo have been there and, and they've, they've, they've gone to the well so many times. They have, like, an Ireland final next week will not, not go battle with them. You know what I mean? You can say it's another game, and it definitely is another game for them. They were in it last year. They've got two last year in September. Uh, they got one there in, in 15 they were in the semi-final against the Dubs they were in 12 and 13 so they know all about Ireland on the final day they know about the sideshow the parade the banquet the suits coming the extra gear etc etc whatever it brings it won't knock a phase out of them all these boys want to do is get out perform go up the steps and that's it well said Before I ask Cora who she thinks is going to win, and we'll finish then with Eamon with the, the neutral verdict, we're in Charlestown, and I'm conscious Tom and Carmel Parsons are in the audience, but I need to ask Mickey C, what's Tom Parsons really like? Like Aidan and John have... Yeah, well, they have to Charlestown say, they flag. have to yeah. say, I, I can go, I'll be going tonight, you know what I mean? I'll be getting a taxi out Depends here. Depends on what you say, Mickey. Go, let's, let's go, I, I can go out the side door or whatever. I, I think Ginger's on the side door. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, could, he could be man it. Tom Parsons is... Um, First of all, you can say he's a lovely fella, uh, a lovely fella. Tom Parsons likes the mirror. He likes the mirror. That's it. The daily mirror, is it? No, the actual mirror. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, Aiden has gone on about this train the whole lot. He likes to keep himself in shape. He likes the nice clothes. But he, he's a genuine, absolute 
lovely fella. Um, you know, he would. You know, he won't put a hair out of place, and if he does, he'll have the hat on. Do you know? <laughs> you know, if the hair is out of place, it's the hat on. That's it. Do you know? I know you mightn't say it, but I'm saying it. Have you ever seen the afro out? I have seen it out. Yeah, it comes out after a shower. But as I said, the sh- you won't see it for too long because he's he's in there in a the corner. Mikhail Park is a pillar in front of him. The second he's dried up, it's down with the hat. Like you know, James Horn's same hat, but he puts puts the hat on. But he's brilliant. You know, um, he came back in in 2014. Like a lot of people, you know, take take for granted. I say Tom Parsons because Tom Parsons actually didn't get going. Okay, he had a stint in the Mayo panel as a young young guy played international rules. Yeah. Uh, I think as well, yeah. yeah and, and and but Tom Parsons actually didn't really get in until the second half of the replay in 2014. And he'll tell you this, no problem, you know. And from then to now, he's been the heartbeat of the Mayo team. Poor, I know you a long time. You're not the kind of lady who speaks from the heart. You're a logical football analyst. Are Mayo going to win the All-Ireland? Yeah, um, well, uh, I've absolutely no doubt in my mind that they'll win. Um, I just think this year there really is something about them. Um, I was in Casavar today and I happened to bump into Alan Dillon and just talked to him for maybe five or ten minutes. And there's just some there's there's something different, as I said earlier on. I can't put a finger on it, but they're hugely confident in themselves just that going into this match. Um, I just think the run that they had this year, you know, they've improved all the time. You know, the back door has suited them. Um, but it's like they know, and I'm not saying it's their last shot, that there's, you know, there's years in many of the guys, but they like to know that their time is now coming and that if they don't take it this time, you know, will it be there for them again? I just think that there's a steely difference in a lot of these players and the, and the players that maybe we, there wasn't in in other years, the likes of the Jason Doherty's, um, the likes of the Andes this year that's back in it, um, you know, the likes of these players, there's a huge difference in them. And I just think that collectively as a team, they were getting a lot better performances out of maybe the players that we weren't getting performance, the likes of the Kevin McLaughlin's, all of these, they're really stepping up. They're becoming leaders and they're, it's like a weight has been lifted off them. The, the shackles have been lifted um, and especially the likes of Kevin McLaughlin, Jason Doherty. They're, they're, they're like they're new players that they've never been in the Mayo panel. It's new to them. They're so hungry and I just think when you have that hunger um, going into a match um, and, and Dublin have, you know, have a, an easy enough run this year. I just think hunger sometimes is just going to beat anything. It, you know, if you work hard enough in any match and you're hungry enough to win it and want to achieve it and they have tried it other years last year it was the it was, they could have won it it was a bit, it was unfortunate two own goals you do need that little bit of luck as mickey says but i just feel that there's something different this year um and yeah i, I do think and I, and I don't think it'll be mayo by a point or two i think mayo can win this game by four or five points No pressure, no pressure, Eamon. I just find it intriguing. I, I've, I've read a lot of articles since the semi-finals, and, and so many pundits are finding it hard to call, too close to call, in fact. And yet, as we were saying earlier, Mayo are going into this final as three to one outsiders. Does that surprise you? And are you going to stick to your convictions? Do you think Mayo have enough to take down this Dublin team? Um, the bookies will always throw throw figures out. At everyone, you know, I saw we saw a race today. One of O'Brien's, one of O'Brien's horses, you know, a twenty to one, uh, when a twenty to one runner better, and he an odds on even, you know, by a head today, and you know, he paid well. You know, it happens. So let's, you know, you can look at it that way. Analyzing football is becoming very, 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 very difficult. Um, last year we analyzed the All Irelands, and. You know, you don't, you, you never predict what actually does happen in certain cases. We never predict for the goals um, and certain situations that actually happen with the black card. An awful lot of factors will happen in terms of how Joe McQuillan will, will referee. He's been, he's been Dublin's lucky go to referee down to the years. Um, a decision, be it a black card, be it a yellow card to a key player or in a key position, could have a bearing on the game. Cora talked about there about Aidan Higgins running himself into, or no, not Aidan Higgins, but Keith Higgins, sorry, um, running himself into the ground and, and just, you know, for the last few minutes, what could happen? Somebody just could come in and flick a ball into the net. An awful lot of factors could happen. Right now, Mayo, I, I genuinely believe Mayo have a, an unbelievable chance of winning now. I'm just afraid that they don't 
change anything. I just don't want them to change anything. The hunger will be there, the desire will be there, the heart, that steely resilience that will be there, that cockiness and that attitude and that, that, you know, that genuine, we're here because we're good enough will be there. I have no doubt about that. Yes, you'll need a little bit of luck. And I, I think it's due at this stage at Mayo. It has to be due at this stage. And uh, like there's no doubt about it. I'm not just saying it for the sake of being in Charleston. I just think if lads deliver, if lads, lads put in the performances that we've been seeing for the last, since the, the Roscommon replay, that freedom about going for it, let's just go to win it. Because Mayo will have to go and win it. Dublin won't hand it them. They'll just have to go and take it on. And the likes of Jason Dart, we mentioned him there. I didn't realise he could kick a 45. I didn't realise you could kick a free from other side. Like, that type of stuff, seeing fellas do that, that I've never experienced for the last five, six years, that's what's going to win you in All-Ireland. And that doing that little bit extra, and I think if lads do that little bit more, I think they can win it. And I do believe, and I stuck to it, as you know yourself, Mike, from the very word go, I says, we all can win this All-Ireland, and I, I'm chipping it. I just want to make Tom Parsons. Um, I played against Tom and I think it was 08. Um, he hammered the life out of us. We were, we were, we'd won the Connacht final in, in 07. And Tom put, was Mark Maney put on an exhibition that day. Um, he's a fantastic footballer. And, you know, I don't think he gets enough of credit. And, I, you know, we're talking about Andy Moore. And we're talking about the key Higginses and, and, and Colin Boys. But I think for me, my old second best footballer this year is Tom Parsons. I think he's been the, he's been the heart. Of, um, he, he, he's been the heartbeat of Mayo football. I know somebody mentioned it there. He's been, you know, going forward. Kerry put Jack Barry on him for the replay after the against Kerry. Um, he was exceptional the first game, and Jack Barry just manhandled him, pulling and dragging off him, and that type of thing. Dublin will fear Tom Parsons the next day. If Tom can deliver a performance, I think there's no doubt Mayo will have will be bringing this across the border here and in about well, 10 days time fingers crossed guys it, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting we could we could stay here all night without a shadow of a doubt but just two pieces of housekeeping before Bill Healy goes uh, with the Rovan mic again first of all Cora it would be remiss of us not to wish you and the Mayo ladies all the best in the all Ireland final That roar just reminds me, I've been at a lot of preview nights over the years and I have never seen an audience as appreciative and as attentive as tonight's here in Charlestown. You obviously love your football. You've been really, really good with all the guests, but I have a feeling you're going to rock the place when Cora answers my next question. Cora, we've been talking about the men's final. Are the Mayo ladies going to beat Dublin and bring the Brendan Martin Cup home? Ah, yeah, we 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 don't fear the dubs. Um, you know, obviously they're going to win as massive favourites. We talked about bookies and odds. I, I wouldn't really know too much about them, but I know in the last two matches, um, um, we've been um, massive underdogs against Donegal and against Cork the last year. Um, you know, and you know what's got us there has been a lot of hard work. Um, you know, we had to look at ourselves after the Connacht final and maybe have a little bit of an attitude change. And it's just been hard work that's got us there. So, um, I think if we work hard and put in a good performance in the 60 minutes there's no reason you know um, I've been lucky enough to be in Crow Park winning all Ireland and I've been un been in there when we've lost them and you know please God um, that um, in, in two weeks time or just over two weeks time um, that you know we, we will but it'll be, it'll be hard work um, as I said it'll be great it'll be a great boost as a team we'll be going up to watch the men and supporting them be no, no, no better boost for us as a ladies team to watch the men take the, the Sam Maguire across the, um, across the Shannon and into Mayo um, and oh, please God seven days later we can do the same thing There you heard it. Cora says, keep the faith. And John Casey was saying, if Mayo win the All-Ireland, party in Casey's on the Monday night. <laughs> Is that okay, John? Bill, where are you at it? Mike, I'm down here and I tell you, I have to change the tax a little bit because the tweet machine is hopping. And uh, I just want to read out a few tweets. Uh, the first one is for Mickey C. And it's Mickey. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's from... Not at, on Twitter. Not on Twitter. I know you're only, yeah. It's from <laughs> at Laura Hegarty saying, Mickey, Aidan Higgins is squeaky clean. Have you any good story you could tell us about him? 
Apart from him looking about 16 for the whole of his career, have you any interesting story or funny story you could tell about him? Don't, I can make one up. Don't hold back. I can, ma I can make one up on Don't the hold back. Uh, no, we, me and Ed are only a year, I think, involved. That's uh, enough. Yeah, holy loads, yeah. Um, no, no, I don't think I've anything. Aidan is a lovely family man. And uh, in fairness, like, at 42, guys, look at him. <laughs> look at that. 42. Jesus Christ. No, I don't have Anton. Well, no, I do. All right, all right. I'm, was... I'm, it's Facebook Live. It, it'll be on Joe.e tomorrow okay, morning. Okay, listen, listen, listen. There was actually two tweets for you, and I'll leave you alone then, because you did tweet before the build-up saying, if you want to find out about the Monday Club, give us the funniest story <laughs> about the Monday Club that we haven't heard before. Oh, yeah. Uh... <laughs> In two minutes. That bloody Twitter, Mickey. What oh, were you thinking? It's a, it's a disaster, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you love it, though. I do love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I look at it. I tell you what happens on Twitter. I get Twitter, and I have a look at it, and I just say to myself, you know what? I'm going to put up here what everybody else is thinking. <laughs> and suddenly then, everybody decides to retweet it, and it's on... It's all over the place, and then there's people giving out to me, and uh, you know. I think you and Donald Trump have the same <laughs> attitude to Twitter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, myself. I'm, yeah. Now he'd have a few more pounds than me, not much, but a few pounds. But the Monday Club, yeah, the Monday Club now didn't go on for long. This, this kind of stopped after that incident we had. Um, what incident was that, Mickey? Well, it was a league game, so we, we played Donegal in the league game, Bank Holiday weekend, and was, you know, and uh, we were hammered, to be honest. And we were struggling for points. I think we'd lost the first two or three league games, and we were staring relegation in the face. And uh, James Horn took us all around. And we, actually, we played on the goal up in Bally Buffet. Or I think it was, where did Bally Shannon? They bring you to Bally Shannon when they, when they think they, they might beat you. And they tighten up the pitch and the whole lot. You know the way everybody does. We do it in Malandine, we've been tight to the. <laughs> as you can't have it any bigger, like, you know, or smaller. But anyway, um, so they brought us up. We went up the night before because we targeted the game big time. We said, this time we're going to have to win this game. This, or else we're, we're, we're in big trouble. And we're hammered, which doesn't really go down well if our team is trying to win the All-Ireland or trying to develop and get to a league final, league semi-final. And uh, we had a bit of a kind of a, a chat around afterwards and James Horne wasn't happy with the, the forms of the team and the subs. Now, this is where I had a big problem because I come on for actually one minute and scored one point. And I was nearly going to say, listen, if I was on for the 70, we'd have won the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, that was my... Uh, that was my thinking of it, like, you know? That was my thinking of it. So I said, listen, we'll glow and we'll blow the froth of a few, you know what I mean? So I brought a few boys with me. I brought a few of the lads with me. We were in Clamaris and they stayed in the house and we woke up and we were shook, you know, as you do being a Monday and bank holiday Monday and a bit of crack was going and I introduced the lads to Monday Club, you know? So we were thinking, oh, we're the best bit of crack of all time. And I haven't really a story from it, but you know, there was a bit of horse racing going on, and there was a few a little bits of a gambling going on, and we were kind of about three or four o'clock in the day, we were having our own little horse races in the pub, but <laughs> but it was great crack, and uh, went into the train on the Tuesday, and from that day to I'd say now it's never been involved in the Monday Club, um, but there is a Monday Club in Davids, Ballandine. It's open. <laughs> it's actually open every Monday. <laughs> Bank holidays? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bank holidays. Every Monday is bank holiday. <laughs> okay, Mike, I'm down in the body of it here. Nobody wants to talk, but I have a tweet in from at Sligo GEA saying, the deadline for the manager application is Tuesday. <laughs> Eamon, at Tony Taylor has a CV in. Where's yours? Um, it's... <laughs> um, I need to be very, very politically correct how I answer this one. Um... Yeah, the, Niall made a decision that he wanted to uh, leave or he couldn't commit, <laughs> and uh, we wish him well. Um, but Sligo need to, Sligo manager, or county board need to decide, you know, uh, how ambitious they need to be or how ambitious they want to be. And, uh, you know, they probably need to put a job spec in place uh, and see who can fit that bill because it's grand bringing people in from Kildare or wherever else and paying them big money um, if they don't really care about Sligo football. Um, and that would be one of the things that I would love in terms of whoever gets it that they actually really, really likes, uh, really, really loves like a football, care about the guys that are, uh, that are in it and obviously make it a, a three to five year plan in terms of um, developing a team. Because right now we are in Mayo uh, and Roscommon and Galway are pushing ahead of us as well. So uh, there's a lot of building to be done there. So 
it's just what the county board really, really need to, to look at and, and to choose wisely when it comes down to it, but be very, very patient with the person they put in. And just, Damon, on that note, you mentioned Tom Parsons there. Out of Tom Parsons and Ginger Tiernan, who was the biggest challenge for you, verbally? Verbally? <laughs> Or physically? Physically, both were, were good. Verbally, no, I, I can. I have, a, I have a bit of a tongue on me. I can. I Ginger can must have given it to you, did he? Yeah, I tell you, he wouldn't be the actually, biggest fellow. I tell you, no, but in fairness, it was John Keats, actually, that <laughs> under 21 level, he. Um, he was always brave when we were playing that only one because he had David Brady behind him all the time. <laughs> So, so Casey will be <laughs> Casey will be giving me lip on the on the under twenty one or whatever else, and as soon as I go out, oh Brady would step in and they'd be oh, 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 oh. and then <laughs> Casey would be like this, he'd be like this behind Brady, yeah, oh, her, I'll fucking get you. <laughs> so, all right. But in fairness, Ginger, yeah, Ginger was. Middle. Ginger is tough as nails, tough as nails. Was he any good though, Eamon? Genuinely. Was he any good, Ginger? <laughs> he was probably not big enough. <laughs> All right, Mike. Mike, we have a man here who refused to ask a question in the first panel, but he's discovered his confidence. Kieran O'Connell, he's back here now. Kieran, question for the panel. Question for the panel, yeah. Um, in light of Galway's great win last week and all the celebrations and euphoria that brought, can can we take anything from that? Or would there be any merit in taking Michal O'Donoghue or Joe Canning in for 10 or 15 minutes in before it, during the week to have a talk with the players and management? Mickey C, you're the sports psychology expert on the couch here. <laughs> Joe Canning to talk to the Mayo team. Joe's on the Monday club, is it? <laughs> He's Joe, uh, He's yeah, you club. won't get Joe this Monday. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, but uh, yeah, it's, it's actually, no, it's an excellent, excellent point, but I wouldn't get any of those two in because, um, no offence anyone, but they're from Galway, you know, they don't really care whether we win it or not, I'd say, you know, <laughs> but I, I would definitely, definitely t take a lot of, a lot of um, positives from the Galway win, um, for me, they looked like all our champions from the second the ball was thrown in against Dublin, they were absolutely brilliant, they conducted themselves on the, on the day, it kind of went up and down at one stage, but then they kicked on and they never looked like they weren't going to be but all our champions. So definitely Mayo will, will, will take huge, um, huge positive kind of energy off it. Uh, and and they, they'd have seen the, the videos that have gone around about them celebrating and fair play to them. They were, they were brilliant. I was delighted to see them win it. In fairness, uh, I mightn't be as delighted to see the footballers win it, but definitely the hurlers. Um, but yeah, I, I think they take huge, huge positive energy from that and saying, listen, you know, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be lovely if we had someone singing, singing a song or the West of the Week or something like that in, in Castle Bar Monday, Monday week? Just two more questions, Mike, and uh, one is from the selector of the Charlestown team, uh, Ronan Kenny. <laughs> uh, it's not really a question, it's just more of your thoughts. Um, I read during the week and made me sick that breaking Dublin into two, north and south, which I think is a disgrace because over 140 minutes last week or last year, that's what separated us from Dublin. Breaking them into two, uh, personally I say fair play to Dublin. Let's go and have a cut at them every year if we can. Why would we break them in two? They're, they've, in, they've set the mark for us all to have a cut at. Just breaking them up in two. It's not for me, like, you know, we're, we're there, like, we're awful, awful, <laughs> fucking close. He's going to ask a question now in 10 seconds. That's not my question. It's, uh, that's my question. What's your thoughts, like? Cora? No, I, I definitely wouldn't agree. Um, it better be like breaking yeah. Carol Cone into two. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and to be no size of it, you know how small Kearney Cone is? <laughs> um, no, not at all. I, I don't think um, you'd ever want to break a county in two. It's, um, you know, silly comments, you know, it's a lot of media just, um, you know, there's a lot of rubbish that's been written in media and people saying things like that. Um, you know, you know, any team that has been success for a number of years, are we going to say the same about Cork ladies? They've won the last 11 out of 12 All-Irelands, you know, you're from where you're from and it's always to get up to compete with a team. Um, you know, Mayo have to get up and compete with Dublin and Mayo are every bit as good as Dublin. Probably didn't have their luck last year. Um, but you know, no, it's a, it's a silly thing. And uh, you know, I'd say if you talk, spoke with any of the Mayo lads or any intercounty footballers, I think it's a silly thing. Um, I do think there's a lot of pundits out there that just, um, 
um, have to fill, fill newspaper columns and, you know, talk on radios and stuff, and a lot of them, at the end of the day, talk a lot of rubbish. None of the lads here tonight now, though. <laughs> You're not talking about any of the lads here tonight, are you? No, no, not at all. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of people say, if, if you want to be the best, you beat the best, you know what I mean? So, you know, you break them up. No, it's not the same. Not a whole. I just, no, just it's on, not. Just on that, I, I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be for breaking them up, but I think you, people need to realise that Dublin have got, you know, there's a panel of what, 30, 32, give or take, and you have a panel, yeah, 36, 36 uh, you yeah. might be able to, but on, on match day. From 36 up to 60, there's a, there's a bunch of players there that would be good enough to get on 90% of the teams across the country. So these, these fellas are the guys that are missing out in terms of football. So I think for them, for Dublin, it's a bit of a, you can only play 15 on the end of, at the end of the day and, and a number of subs. Mayo have got that type of quality to match them. So. It's a detriment to Mayo or to Dublin that they are that some good players aren't getting the opportunity to play county football. You know, you talk about the Kilmacuds, and I think it's well documented. They're underage. They've got nearly over the guts of 300 kids at under 14 level training every sun Sunday morning or Saturday morning. So 300 children playing and training in one club alone is absolutely astronomical. But these kids. All of them won't get game time as many as much as the competitions they have. So it's to the detriment too that, it, albeit that the success is there, everybody won't get the opportunity to play football. And you know, to be split them in two is it is it's ludicrous talk. It's yeah, crazy talk. Like, like you said to me, Mike, it's like splitting. You know, like the bigger clubs. We're, I'm from a rural club. Terrellstown is small enough as well. You know, but you compete. You know, we've been competing as a, as a ladies' football club. Um, with all the bigger clubs and we, we've played the Dublin teams we've played the big teams but that's not what it's about you're, you're bringing whoever through we're, we're working off a panel of maybe 20 or 21 but you're, you're passionate about where you're from you know, and you're, you know that's what it's about it's, I, it's about me it's about putting on the red and green jersey of Karen O'Conn and putting on the red and green jersey of Mayo it's, and I only love to be playing the bigger clubs and want to, want to beat them it's more satisfying we don't, we don't hear will we split Kilkenny in two because they've been a great hurling team for the last 10 years or 15 years Do you know it's, you, you, as Mike uh, Mickey C said you have to you know, try, to be the best, you have to get up to the best level, and whatever that takes, and whatever that, whatever amount of work that you have to put, to put up there. A mayor, that mayor, were millimeters away of it, and and, and in nine days' time, will they be, or, or yeah. weeks' time, will they be talking about splitting in Dublin and two, and we may have beaten them? Yeah. It won't be. Okay, Mike. I, I, Mike. I, I, <clears throat> We're on the home run. Last couple of tweets. There's two tweets in there I need to read out. Is it true Aidan Higgins bailed 200 bales of hay before the Dublin game in 2006? <laughs> I was actually spreading slurry that morning. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one was for Eamon O'Hara from at Declan Dibley. How much does it cost Eamon to look that good? <laughs> hey, if you got it, you got it. <laughs> Tom Parsons is the second best looking fella in Charlestown tonight. <laughs> and finally, I actually got a woman to talk, so Maureen McIntyre has a question for Cora, thankfully, at last. Hi, Cora. Hi. Um, just want to know, I know we're kind of going on to the ladies' side now, but we were up in Dublin last year um, supporting our under-10 girls, and um, we watched Cork beat Dublin. So they're going to be hungry against you guys this year. How do you approach that, and what do you say to the younger players on the team? Uh, yeah, obviously Dublin are, and the ladies are go, they're, in, they're going into their fourth All Ireland, um, obviously, and they've lost the, the, the last three against Cork. So um, I'm sure they're delighted that it's uh, Mayo. Come, they're coming up against Mayo rather than Cork. Um, I suppose there's a few of us on the, on the team that has been around a long time. Um, you know, people are probably trying to retire us from the last five or six years. That's that's right, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, no, you just you approach every game differently. You just approach it, and I suppose we have to ground the younger girls maybe after the Cork victory. And we were back training on 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 Monday night and a good run and session put in um, in on the Monday night. So it's just to ground them and just, you know, obviously yeah, Dublin have the experience of All-Ireland Final Day. Very few of us have, have the experience, it's only four or five of us. So it's just, you know, tell them as much as you can. Let them embrace, embrace All-Ireland Finals. They're there to be enjoyed. Um, but at the same time, maybe an odd time throwing the stories about our defeats in 2001 and 2007. Um, because they're the ones that really hurt. You know, I probably can tell you more about All Ireland Final Days and everything that you've done wrong in 2001 and 2007. Where a lot of the times, All Ireland Finals, the ones that you've won have gone by in a shot and you don't really remember too much from them. 
Ma'am, like Mickey C, you, you probably remember the week after them better than you will the actual event. Um, so, it's, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's just yeah, it's to embrace it. You know, we've we've girls as young as 17, 18 on the panel that will be starting the next day. So it's just embrace it and enjoy it. Um, and tell them the last time we played in the Ireland final was 10 years ago, um, you know, so it's, it's been a long time. Um, but when you're there, you know, Crow Park is only a place to win, Crow Park is not a place to lose. Big time, yeah. Did they cut you off, Bill? Probably. <laughs> that last tweet and last question. The last tweet was from at Palsy Horkin, 36. Cora, do you ever look at the senior team, the men's team, and go, fuck it, I could do a job in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. I certainly couldn't do any job. Um, <laughs> to be a very naive 17 year old after we won the first All-Ireland to make a comment about the men um, so that's um, a long time ago and I haven't made a, a comment about it since um, I was lucky enough to have played with Alan Dillon when I was um, a young 12, 13, 14 year old and um, the, you know um, men's and women's football are completely different um, you know obviously physicality wise and all that so no um, you know I watched them obviously with pride and you know uh, true as this might and seem I did, I, I did look up to John Casey in 96 and did, did, did try even the strip across the nose to see would it make me any better. <laughs> and Mike... So, so he, was, he was one of my, along with Kieran McDonald, was one of my childhood heroes growing up, so I was in the lawn trying to be like him. Cora, John, just, will you wear a nose band in the final? <laughs> yeah, if it's sponsored, I might, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give the last word to our the secretary or treasurer, he does everything Kevin Dignan, but I think on behalf of the whole pub we'd love to wish Cora the very best of luck in the All-Ireland Final and I hope she does as well. And just on that note uh, Kevin, Kevin Dignan here is like to ask one more question yeah, lads, um, just on previous All-Ireland Finals, it's always been nominated by Lee Keegan and Jeremy Connolly. We know Jeremy Connolly won't be playing. <laughs> we know it. Uh, we're, we're, I, we're not sure he won't be playing. Um, in your opinion, who does Lee Keegan pick up? My opinion is James McCarthy, middle of the field, is one of the main fellas that make that Dublin team tick. Um, is there any justification in Lee Keegan picking him up in the final? Um, personally, I'd like to see him probably picking up uh, Kieran Kilkenny. Um, you know what I mean? Especially if Kieran is coming into the game or whatever, definitely to pick him up. But um, it sometimes takes some Lee's forward game if he's if, if he's marking someone. But he always plays that role to the better of the team. You know what I mean? So he takes that role on. So he could be the best person to to, to, to mark Kilkenny. I think. Um James McCarthy will probably be given a job from the Dublin team. He'll probably look to, to man mark Tom Parsons, obviously. Um, I think for me, Lee would probably pick up Con Callahan myself. I think he's been a, a revelation for Dublin this year. He's, uh, he's key to making them tick. He's just full of energy, full of movement, and uh, you know he's, he's filling a big pair of boots there when it's, it's uh, Jeremy McConnell's place that he's actually taken. And uh, I think for me, that would be the man mark and job that he should do. Yeah, like the, I think the funny thing about Lee Keegan is I don't know do I have a lot of people picked up, but Lee, Lee played in the forwards in the half forward line against Kerry, um, and he picked up Paul Murphy the first day, and then the second day Murphy would drop back as a sweeper and he left him free, so he kind of had a free roll. So he'd be going back in the backs, I'd imagine, and I'd imagine Aidan O'Shea would be going up in the forwards or midfield or whatever like that. But I'd agree with the I go with Kilkenny. I think Kilkenny and Finton need to be hammered. Yeah, literally strappers. Take them out. You take them out. I think we win the All Ireland, 100%. Fenton and Kilkenny are gone. They're the heartbeat. They're the boys that make them tick. You see Kilkenny getting on the ball. He take, he's pointing towards the plays. And Fenton, I think, is is one of the best midfielders in Ireland and, and, and will be. Um, but yeah, I definitely Keegan on one of them. I think I think he, I think he plays his best stuff when he's assigned a certain job. So I, I'd have him on, on on the boys that are looking to take out. And just picking up on that, Cora, to finish, uh, Oshin McConville last night was adamant he thinks Jim McConnelly will start and he made the point if he does 
he wouldn't think twice. He'd put Lee Keegan on him straight away. Wouldn't think twice about it. If Connolly starts, would you put Keegan on him? Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. I'd be a bit like Oshie. I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if Connolly um, starts the next day. Um, I do think, yeah, while well, the Dublin forward line looked very good against Tyrone, the likes of Paddy Andrews and Dean Rock, I still think they're still missing something up there. In, in, we, we, we've talked about Kieran Kilkelly. He's nearly playing the role of a, role of a third midfielder, nearly con- going back into the back line. But uh, as a scoring threat up there, I think they're still missing something. Yeah, young Conor Callan has been doing very well, but I don't think he's come up to, to the level of people that he's been marking either. Um, you know, he's been on a couple of players the last day. We yeah, didn't really do any damage the players he's marking. But I don't think he'll come up against someone like the Mayo defence, like a Keith Higgins or someone like that. I think it's going to be a whole new ball game it's a very very big step up for him um, and I don't think he'll have as, as a massive influence on the game as other games so I, I wouldn't be surprised I wouldn't be surprised if there's a change or two come at 3 o'clock on Sunday I think Dublin will name their team as normal but I wouldn't be surprised come 3 o'clock or on Sunday that we have at the likes of Kev McManum starting or Bernard Brogan or Jeremy McConley I don't think it'll be the same 6 fours that starts the last that they'll start again for Dublin this time How's that for you, Daigo? <laughs> <laughs> You're not very impressed. Bill, are we done? Yeah, Mike, if we could just ask the panel to stay in their positions and we'll do the draw for the, the prizes. So Liam is going to bring up the bucket. So.